It's time for High School Football, presented by TISD and Cox Communications of Tyler. Brought to you by Dairy Queen. Also brought to you by these sponsors. Get ready. High School Football is just ahead. Jamie tell Kyle Rutherford he's not allowed to walk out to midfield with the captains until we get through this uh, minute. We have, I think we'll be okay. I think we'll be okay. Give me a 30 uh, countdown because they got to still meet and talk and act like they care. Okay. That is Lee head football coach Mike Owens. Trinity's on the field in their white uniforms with the black numbers, the red trim. Lee with their red uniforms, the white numbers, and, of course, the red helmets as well. When we come back, uh, I think the coin toss following the national anthem. The DQ Caramel Latte Resistance Test. Begin. Irresistible new DQ Caramel Moulatte. Gooey caramel, rich coffee, and creamy DQ soft serve. DQ, something different. <laughs> if you want big, Don's TV and Home Electronics is East Texas' largest dealer for big screens, big brands, big service, and great big deals. From big plasmas to HD-ready home theater projection systems to big home theater sound. And our sales and service associates are eager to help you with big smiles. Don's TV and Home Electronics. Now that's big. Back at Trinity Mother Francis Rose Stadium in Tyler, I'm David Smoke, our producer Justin Brinker. Engineer Mike LaRue, Jamie Lynn on the sidelines, Randy Johnson and Kerry Ainsworth in the booth, and the captains for Lee, Jeremy Moore, Justin Hansen, Jake Kirkpatrick, and also number 56 for Lee, Chase Carlton, the left guard. Jamie Lent down at midfield. As they, the captains meet, shake hands. They've, they kind of get to know each other a little bit the last year and are about to know each other a lot. You know the coach has already done the flip before y'all went on the dressing room. We're going to mock it then, right there. Number 56, okay. Chase Carlton. You're going to receive him on this end. You're going to kick off from this end. Okay? All right, Robert E. Lee, as, uh, again, uh, will kick off as Euless Trinity in that high-octane offense has won the toss. They want the football on what is the east end zone. And uh, one note about tonight's game, the scoreboard, the old antiquated scoreboard, remember they had the auxiliary scoreboard put in, it is out. It is not working. And thank goodness that Danny Long in the athletic department thought ahead and had that auxiliary scoreboard put in, so we'll have to rely on that. And uh, that's a little bit different. The play clocks are working. And before we start the broadcast, Lee will kick off to that. Again, Trinity Trojans offense averaging over 54 points a game in two weeks. Good luck to Matt Mullins. Matt, who is the uh, Lee holder on extra points and field goals, is under the weather and has spent the last 24 hours or so in the uh, emergency room in the hospital and we do wish Matt Mullins the best of luck the uh, holder and the senior and I was talking to his uh, dad Peyton Mullins the uh, running backs coach and he said David he doesn't have any he's lost six pounds in in a day and he doesn't have a lot of pounds to lose but uh, we do wish Matt Mullins the best of luck in his recovery hopefully Matt if you're listening you get back and healthy and a lot of people came back from that trip to Ohio, one with a headache from the loss, but also with a lot of nasal colds and head colds and allergies and up. Hey, also, one other note about Lee. They have a new kicker 
for this game is sophomore Taylor Matlock from the soccer program. Joseph Cleaver will still handle the extra points and the field goals, and he's kicking off deep to Robert, Robert Davila and also Matt Stewart, who's the fastest player on the Trinity football team. Pretty good kick, Davila at the five. At the 10, looks for a seam at the 15 out to the 26 yard line. And here's what Trinity has, the quarterback. He's a good one, Trevor Vitito. Last year, throws for 1,974 yards and 14 touchdowns. Then they have the great running backs, LaDerrick Handy. And Dimitri Nance has almost, almost 400 yards in two games and six touchdowns, 1,670 yards rushing, 18 touchdowns a year ago. Up front, Leon, uh, Le Leonard Ricard, Saya Falahola, Tyler Mansell, the center, Manaki Vitae, the guard, and George Folau is the right tackle. Scroggins, the tight end. They run the first play to Dimitri Nance at the middle for a couple of three yards. We'll see a lot of different receivers, Derek Chenard and Ryan Buck and others. Lee up front, Jacoby McKenzie, the 6'1", 256 senior. Colby Ray and Roderick Brown, the defensive ends. Linebackers are Matt Uzel and Michael Wall on the outside. Jonathan Williams, the bandit. George Faber is the middle linebacker. Quet Nicholson and Adrian Beard, the corners. And Jeremy Moore is the rover. To carry in Cuba, his second game back is the safety, the 6'2", 193 junior. And Dimitri Nance got three yards. Right up the gut on first down. Vitado back to, nope, he's gonna throw it to Nance right. Tackle first down, out close to the 38 yard line, and he is a load. Dimitri Nance, 5'10", 195 senior, tackled by Cuba, but looks like he has a first down at their 38 yard line. And right off the bat, David Trinity comes with trap plays on both first and second down as they run behind the right side of their enormous offensive line, as Jamie has mentioned, and you've alluded to, behind Manaki Vitae, the right guard, 6'3", 279. So they will have a measurement here, and they run that counter tray, and that was the play in which they had so much effect last year. It is a first down, uh, even though they were going to bring out the the, the, uh, the sticks, but it's a first down at the 38-yard line. Sideline warning early on against Lee. Mitch Prater, the official from the uh, Tyler chapter. Lines, linesman is Gary Chuck. The line judge, Carl Rutherford. Back judge is Monty Florence. And the umpire is Charles Batie. As Trinity has a first down at their 38-yard line. Straight eye formation. Trevor Vitito, the senior quarterback. Scroggins tight end near side. Vitito runs the stretch to Nance, turns the corner at the 45. First down at midfield and knocked out of bounds by Cuba. Quet Nicholson was there, but he got around Nicholson in the corner. Gain of 12 and a first down Trinity at midfield on the opening possession of this game, and they got the corner again. Well, Nance is very, very quick to the outside, David, and he makes a good decision not to come back inside. His three or four red jerseys were there to meet him. He uh, extends a play on that, and he's run out of bounds by three or four red Raiders. So they go up the middle and try to loosen up the middle, and then they go wide, and Nance with a very strong, powerful runner, but also with great speed, and there's no one on the wide receiver outside. They run. The fullback handy for about six yards down inside the lead 45 yard line. Michael Wall was there and they had a receiver that was Derek Chenard out wide and nobody was there. And Adrian Beard will come out and here comes Tim Heider, the junior, who started the year as a safety at second down and six. Well, that's the epitome of lulling a defense to sleep. Fortunately, uh, Cuba saw it and ran out to cover the receiver who was uncovered. Handy gets six down to the lead 44 yard line. McKenzie in the middle for a lead with a four man front as they bring Uzel up closer. Deep pitch back to Nance, turns the corner at the 40. First down, down to the lead, 35. Couple of helmets come off, including that of Justin Hansen and Quet Nicholson there. Again on the stop, but a gain of eight yards and a first down, down to the lead, 34 yard line. And uh, the bad news here early, if you're uh, a defensive coordinator, Randy Huffstickler, is Cuba and Nicholson have made most of the tackles early on in this game. Yeah, that's a bad, bad sign when safeties and corners are up to make the stops, unless they're doing it in the backfield, of course. But right now, it's a really methodical drive for Trinity thus far. Ricard, Folahalo, Manson, Vitae, and Folau, the tackle to tackle in motion. Robert Davila now goes in motion. Here's the draw play to Nance, gets outside 30, close to another first down, a couple of yards short, down inside the 30, down to the 26. 
to carry in Cuba and Michael Wall, the senior linebacker, on the stop for Robert E. Lee. And it's going to bring up second down and short at the Lee 27 yard line. Mark Brotherton has checked in the game now for McKenzie at defensive tackle. Well, the Trinity offensive line is getting a nice surge and push and handy, as well as Nance is able to just find his holes. And he did that time picking up eight. They bring in two receivers. They'll bring them this way. Ryan Buck. The 6'4 receiver. In the slot, it is Davila. One setback, handy in motion. They run it to Nance up the middle, squeezes down inside the 25 for a first down to the 23. And a gain of four yards. Matt Uzel was there for Robert E. Lee as they try to rotate some players defensively. That was Brotherton at tackle, who also got a little bit of a trip that time. And Colby Ray involved, but a first down as Nance gets four. And Trinity on their opening possession inside the lead 25. Well, Lee has to find a way tonight, David, to get some kind of surge defensively to try to disrupt plays at the, at the get-go. And right now, they're not able to do it thus far. First down, Trojans, the lead 23, 849 to go opening quarter. Handy in motion, kind of in an H-back position. Nance up the middle. Dodges a couple of tacklers inside the lead 15 and has a first down. Cuba was there. He had to dance sideways inside the lead tackles and the uh, linebackers, and he did a very nice nifty job inside the 15 and another first down. And Trinity now inside the red zone at the lead 13-yard line. McKenzie back in the game for Brotherton for Robert E. Lee. They're going to... Well, again, they're going to move the sticks. They said first down. Now they might want to bring the sticks out and measure. But Nance has got 10 more. He already has 52 yards on seven carries. He had a monster game against Lee last year up at Pennington Field. In fact, in two games against Robert E. Lee, he had 28 carries, 357 yards, and six touchdowns. Most of the damage was done at Pennington Field. They held him in check in that championship game. Well, Jess Clint, Roberts in at linebacker for Lee. Well, clearly he has great vision as he shook a little move that time on Brotherton and had him swinging the wrong way, and he danced on by him and picked up a nice gain of nine. He had eight carries for 56 yards last year in the, in the semifinal game. So he had, remember, almost 300 yards in that game against Lee down at Pennington Field. Now they go one back. Nance counter trade right tackle, breaks a tackle inside the 10, and he is running, as Mike Owen said, possessed as they're down inside the 10, and they gave him nine on the first down play. They get about six more here down to the least seven yard line. And that's a seven-yard pickup in the first down. Well, the counter try swings from left to right, and he does a great job of falling behind his blockers, David. He gets behind the big guy, Vitae, on the right side, and Folau, the tackle as well, pushing back on the lead defense. So down to the seven-yard line from about the 14, 7.50, clock running in Trinity, right now methodically using their running game. Scroggins in motion, double tight set, pitch back to Nance. He's at the 10, cuts it inside the five, and down near the three and close to the two to carry in Cuba. We've called his name a half a dozen times early, and what's happening right now is that huge offensive line, 263, 310, 235, 279, and 372, the right tackle, George Folau. They're just not allowing anybody to have penetration. He got four yards. They're just too massive, and they're just doing they're doing a great job of keeping on their blocks, and at least defenders are, aren't able to shit off the block so far. Lee's second half defense was very good against Colerain. They gave up only a couple of plays, but they fell down early, remember, against the Cardinals. Vitito, the quarterback, straight eye. Handy, the fullback, into the end zone. Touchdown, Euless Trinity. And they made that drive very methodical. Five minutes and three seconds. Not one single time that they have to throw the football. George Faber was there, but Handy has just scored his fifth touchdown of the year and a very impressive message sending drive early for the Trojans. Yeah, they do a good job, David. They just execute clean, crisp handoffs and great blocking, surge blocking up front for their offensive line. Net six points for Trinity. Here comes the extra point by Perry Negreros. Here comes a fake, and they get it. They run a fake on the extra point. And the holder that time, Derek Bowie, takes the snap and runs right through the middle and scores a two-point conversion. 6.57 to go first quarter. Trinity 8, Lee nothing. Back in 60 seconds on KTBB. Hi, I'm Whitney at Mike Paul Auto Group, where if you give us a chance, we will save you money. There's still time to save with Employee Pricing Plus on new Jeeps. You pay what we pay and not a penny more. If a new Mazda is what you're looking for, Save on Ultimate Zoom Zoom with the Mazda S plan exclusively here at Mike Pyle. Now is the best time ever to save on new Mazdas and Jeeps. 
Help us fight hunger in East Texas. Come take a test drive and we'll provide enough food for a hungry child for a week. Mike Powell, going the extra mile against hunger. In the game of life, there are no timeouts, only time wasted. The path you choose now determines your future. But where can you go to find a sense of purpose? There is a place where team spirit steps off the field and into the classroom, where no victory goes unnoticed, and there's no such thing as wasted time. That place is Tyler Junior College, living life in color, never black and white. Come to Tyler Junior College. We're changing the game. We're changing lives. Barry Negreros, the kicker, who had that extra point, it was a fake, and Bowie, Derek Bowie, the holder, took the snap and ran right through the middle, and 8 nothing Trinity with 6.57 to go. Back deep for Robert E. Lee, Josh Bork, and Marquis Seaton. Here comes Trinity with the kickoff. High little pooch kick that will head out of bounds, and Lee will, yep, it did. It goes out of bounds, so Lee will probably take the field position somewhere around the 30-yard line. A Matt Uzel or Mason was there, and he did a nice job of being patient to let that thing go out of bounds. Right about the time of Lee, Upman was about to pick it up. They let it go out of bounds, but a nice, impressive opening for the Ulysses Trinity Trojans. Yeah, they march right down the field, David. 11 plays, 73 yards, and 5.03. They ate up nearly half of the first quarter. Very impressive indeed. Lee has to find an answer to slow it down tonight, if possible. So Josh Bork, who used to handle the kickoffs for Robert E. Lee, now back as a deep man. Jeremy Moore is one of the upbacks for Robert E. Lee at about the 20-yard line. And Negregos will uh, kick off now from his 35-yard line. And lead offensively already down eight to nothing. They started off last week, remember, down 14 to nothing. They tried to battle back, got to within 12, but just couldn't get that big drive to get in the end zone in the third quarter. Trinity with their kickoff coverage, guys waving their arms back and forth. Here comes the kick. It's another pooch kick, and Lee will call a fair catch. Mason at the 35 yard line, and now it's up to the Lee offense to get involved in this game in a hurry. The quarterback is Preston Hill, the junior or the senior. Last week, uh, again, was sharp at times, had a couple of picks. One of them down in the goal line on fourth down was really not his fault. He was just trying to make a play. He said he wishes he had the one throw back that also was the next drive of that quarter. Jake Kirkpatrick, Chase Carlton, Andrew Bailey, Mario Tremble, and John Landis tackle to tackle. We'll also see a lot of Ryan Ginwright in this game. Jonathan Williams and Marcus Jackson are the wideouts. Lee will run stretch. Jason Williams left tackle. Not much there at all as Trinity defensively Steps up and stops Jason Williams after a gain of perhaps a yard or two. Nathan Tucker, the fullback, and watch for the name of Henry Nute, number 90, the 6'4", 254-pound senior, 18 tackles and three sacks already this year, seven sacks last year, and Williams that time on what is Lee's bread and butter play, not able to pick up much at all, just nudging across the 35-yard line at second down and 10. Straight eye, Hill, the quarterback, they run, Williams right tackle, got a couple of three yards and that is it. Off right tackle, they get out to the 37 yard line. Ryan Foster, one of the outside linebackers along with Saya Miyakioli, the senior middle linebacker on the stop and it's third down and eight for Lee. Well Lee's not able to get any penetration thus far on either offensive play, David. And it's the big guys up front and also the linebackers who are in on a host of tackles for Trinity. And Ryan Foster is another good one back from last year. Marcus Jackson in the slot far side. Amy is the wide out. Tyler Fleet, the tight end, split backs. And they have five men on the line of scrimmage. Here comes Nute. Run the screen. Tucker at the 40 and will be short of the first down. And there's a player down. Andrew Bailey, the starting center, is writhing in pain at the 40-yard line. And that is not a good sign. Nathan Tucker took the screen pass, picked up five yards out to the 47-yard line, but center Andrew Bailey, the only returning player with any experience in the offensive line, is down on the field at the 40. The trainer, Weldon Thompson and company, looking him over. So is Gary Fleet. We're back in 60 seconds on KTBB. Car shopping can be stressful. With all the clutter out there, it's hard to tell what to buy. But at Jim Lozier's Fire Station Auto Center, we believe that the simplest way is the best way. So we offer a large selection of quality pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs, priced to sell with no hassles. Each vehicle has been through a 20-point inspection for quality assurance. You can shop in comfort under the awnings and check out our newly expanded lot with more inventory than ever before. 
Jim Lozier's Fire Station Auto Center on the corner of Glenwood and Vine and Tyler. Chase Carlton snapping to Preston Hill, averaging 37.1 yards a punt from the 42. Good snap, little pressure, gets it off, and what a rocket shot by Preston Hill. Davila at the 20 and hit down immediately at the 20-yard line, and he took a head shot. Man. May have been Ryan McSwain that knocked Davila down. A 43-yard punt by Preston Hill, a two-yard return, and great coverage for Lee. But Trinity's offense does have the football with an 8 to nothing lead with 6.20 to go, 5.20 to go in the first quarter. An update on that game between John Tyler and Kilgore. John Tyler, 6, Kilgore, nothing early on in that game at RE St. John Stadium and what has to be a packed crowd over there. Trinity probably has brought as many people for a road team that we've seen from a non-East Texas school in many, many years. There's a bunch of people over there watching this game down from the Ulysses Bedford area. Nice punt by Preston Hill of 43 yards. They run Nance on the, uh, oh, there's a fullback bootleg and a man Scroggins is wide open midfield Lee 40 Lee 30 Lee 25 breaks a tackle inside the 15 yard line and the big tight end Scroggins Jordan Scroggins with a monster play Adrian Beard finally knocks him down and I'll tell you the surprising thing there Randy he caught it and outran the lead defense he's a tight end 6'3 247 67 yards well they swung him across the middle and no one was there to cover him as two uh, wide receivers went out to the far right side and Benito had his choice of the receivers and he finds Scroggins over the middle he makes the catch and he motors and lumbers down for he's wrestled out of bounds by a couple of red shirts led by Cuba for Robert E. Lee. And now a nightmare situation here is they're already inside the 15 but even worse the, the, the clock is dead they already have the big clock that is out and now the auxiliary clock is also out and I'm not real sure exactly what they're going to do because there's no other there's no other option no play the play clock still seems to be working but the officials now and again the uh, referee is Mitch Prater and I tell you one of the things you, you got to wonder is that the big clock is out the scoreboard and the auxiliary clock they're going to try to see if they can get that thing tuned up and you just don't uh, you don't just replace a couple of you, you might this might be a an emergency budget situation to try to find a scoreboard by the time that John Tyler plays here in fact a week from tonight and TJC plays here tomorrow so first down boy what a 67 yard that was a quarterback bootleg he faked me out Vitito found Scroggins who goes 67 yards and they're knocking on the lead 15 in, inside the 15 double tight set handy up the middle at the 10 nice job by Hanson here comes a flag down George Faber was there as well and this is going to come back and could be a 10 yard holding call against the big Trojans offensive line that might be a big break if that is indeed the infraction and it is and so that's a big break for Lee and you know with the clock going out they got a few seconds to catch their breath at least uh, but nonetheless Trinity is having their way thus far early in the contest. Vitito with those great running backs Handy and Nance 10 of 15 this year throwing the football with three touchdowns no interceptions and 280 yards and I tell you what their best pass play this year was an 86-yard touchdown pass from Dimitri Nance, the tailback, to Marcus King. In fact, it might have been a 63-yard touchdown pass. He took a sweep. Everyone sucked up on Nance. He tosses a touchdown to Marcus King and uh, Trinity with the weapons they have. Again, we don't know the time. We just know it's 8-0 Trinity, and they have the ball at the lead 23-yard line and marching even though it's a 10-yard holding penalty. First and 20. Scroggins in motion. Vitito play action pass. Looks for Scroggins and now wants to run to the near side. Has plenty of time. Now wants to go the other way and he's got a lot of room. Throws. He's got a man open over shoots to Beatry Nance. And thank God he did because Robert E. Lee Faber was there to force the play. There's an illegal man downfield, it looks like, against Trinity because Nance was wide open at about the 15-yard line, but he, he had all day. It looked like Donovan McNabb last year on Monday Night Football against the Cowboys when he finally threw the long pass to Freddie Mitchell. 
McKenzie's out of the game. Trimble's in the game at tackle. And another penalty. I think if you're Lee, you decline this one at second down and 20. Well, he had to scramble and uh, had Kobe Wright coming near side. And on the back side, he had Rod Brown. And Rod Brown was picked off by the center as he cleared the far outside of the field and just overthrew his intended receiver. Illegal man downfield against Trinity. And the play, an incomplete pass from Vitito intended for Dimitri Nance. Jamie? David just finished talking to trainer Weldon Thompson as saying that Andrew Bailey, Bailey sprained his right ankle pretty badly, but they are going to tape him up and see if he can try it out. Bailey the only one with experience on that offensive line. I don't know who they would use at the backup center. Possibly Carlton bring Jin right in. Here's an option wide to Dimitri Nancy tries to get around and throws the ball and it's going to be incomplete. I just told you about Nance throwing that option pass and Jeremy Moore with a fantastic play. He tried to find the tight end Scroggins. Nicholson was there, almost picked it off. And Scroggins, a big part of the offensive, but a great play by Jeremy Moore to force the incomplete pass. Well, add credit to Michael Wall, too, David. He came over as well and applied the pressure to Handy. And Handy almost bobbled the ball in his hands as he was trying to get a hold of it to throw it downfield. And, uh, and fortunately for Trinity, it was not intercepted by Nichols. So third and 20, they had the 67-yard bootleg pass to the tight end. Then they try to throw the ball, incomplete. Had all day to do it. Scoreboard trying to get lubed up, get back into play and they go shotgun with Trevor Vitito. Nearly 2,000 yards passing a year ago. Takes the shotgun snap, has all day. Over the middle, man wide open. Caught it. Touchdown. Marcus King, there was nobody in sight. Vitito in the shotgun had plenty of time. He throws it to King, and he was so wide open, he almost dropped it. In fact, he did, and he smothered it with his knees, and he was all by himself in the end zone. It is 13, now 14 to nothing, Trinity, with an extra point to come. Just a blown coverage for Lee Secondary. No one at home at all to pick him up. He was wide open. Here's the, the extra point, which is good, and our score, Mike Owens talked about these Trinity Trojans. Very impressive so far. 15 to nothing, Trinity back in a moment on News Talk 600, KTBB. When you join ETMC EMS, you get peace of mind. Because an annual membership fee as low as $48 covers you and all qualified members of your household for emergency and medically necessary non-emergency transports, which would cost an average of $600 each. And you get the added peace of mind of knowing that the region's most advanced EMS system will answer your call for help. Membership deadline is September 30th, so don't delay. Call or visit the website and join ETMC EMS today. Mike Powell introduces a new kind of food drive to East Texas. One in four East Texas children are growing up without enough food to eat. Even minor malnutrition can impair physical growth and diminish learning ability. This is your chance to join us in the fight against hunger. Come into Mike Pyle, take a test drive, and we'll provide enough food to feed a hungry child for an entire week. Mike Pyle, going the extra mile in the fight against hunger. 15 to nothing, Trinity with 344 to go in the opening quarter. Four plays, 80 yards, and approximately a minute and a half thereabouts, and they took it in. 28-yard touchdown pass, King from Vitito. And Vitito had all day to throw the football. Here comes the kick, little pooch kick this time down the middle. Lee will field it at the 17, at the 20, 25, slips down, and not close to the 30-yard line. Return that time by Jamal Mitchell. And Lee's offense now with the defense down 15 to nothing, needing some points. And let's see what happens at the center position. They might need to put Ryan Jenright, who they were looking at playing a lot at left guard, as Andrew Bailey continues to get taped. And the possibility that Chase Carlton, the 195-pound senior center, might be having to play center here. It is. It's a Chase Carlton at center. They go split backs behind Preston Hill. Play action pass, wants to throw. Steps up in the pocket, throws, caught. Jonathan Williams close to a first down at the 37 yard line. That's Jacob Amy, excuse me. Nice job by Jacob to go up and catch it. Good job by Preston Hill in the offensive line to give him a pocket to step up in. And he picks up seven yards, eight yards out to the 37 yard line. It's second down and two. Lee's offense is trying to show some life and that's a good start right there. A great route run by Amy as he comes from his outside position and cuts back inside on a nine yard curl. 
And Preston Hill had plenty of time as the line did a good job of protection. Three minutes to go, and Lee's offense desperately needing to not only put some points on the board, but just, if anything right now, give the defense a chance to breathe after those first two drives by the Trojans. They go stack left side, left hash mark, second down and two. Jason Williams up the gut, secondary, near midfield, first down, a gain of 13 yards. Right off a left tackle, Jake Kirkpatrick and Ryan Jinright were there, and Jason Williams with John Landis leading the way for 13. And a nice hole opens up to the left side, and Jason Williams shoots through it like a bullet through, through a shotgun, and he blasts into the secondary for a nice gainer. Lee at the 49-yard line, second down, uh, the second possession, first one three and out. Here comes the stretch. Jason Williams right tackle, nothing there. What a nice play by the middle linebacker, Saya. Miyakioli, the 5'10", 228-pound senior, makes the play, and Jason had big room after that, but the middle linebacker was there where he's supposed to be in a gain of a yard. Well, he does a great job. That is, Miyakioli just slices right through an attempted block from the right guard, Trimble, and gets right by him to hit Jason for a short gain. Amy and Jackson split far side for lead, right at midfield on second down and nine. Fleet the tight end, Mason the tight end as well. Back to throw, Preston Hill in the pocket, sideline pass, caught, Amy, first down, 40, down inside the 40 to the 37-yard line, gain of 15 yards, the cornerback, Mike Smith, makes the stop for Trinity, and the Lee offense in the Trinity territory for the first time tonight. And, and just another good route run that time by Amy, he separates from the corner who gets behind him by two or three yards, he makes the catch and runs ahead for a few more before he's brought down in the secondary that time by Mike Smith. And Which Torrey we already Baker. mentioned, okay. gain of 15 yards, Nathan Tucker back in the game, the fullback, offset eye at the 37-yard line. Mason, the tight end, they run the fullback, Tucker 30, Close to a seven, eight yard gain, knocked down by Matt Stewart, the senior cornerback who was listed by Steve Lineweaver as the fastest player on this team. And that's saying quite a bit. Trimble and Bailey that time with a nice double team and Tucker with a nice gain of seven yards. Andrew Bailey gutsy out there now with that ankle wrapped up and he's getting some mobility and some push and does a great job on that drive block. Up front for Trinity, you've got Leota, Kautai, Fine, and Nute. And Lee with a second down and four. Just outside the 30, they need a timeout. Preston Hill wants to talk it over with uh, Mike Owens. Maybe not the right personnel in the game. And we have seen that a little bit this year on some punts, but not often during scrimmage plays. And looks like a wide receiver was not in the game. But Andrew Bailey, that time it was Carlton and Trimble on the double team with Tucker. Second down and four. And Lee trying to put together a much needed drive. Jamie. Bailey has gotten taped up, David. They worked over on him over here on the sideline a little bit, fired off pretending uh, to come off the line of scrimmage a few times. It looked like he was okay. They decided they were going to tape it up a little bit more before they send him back out there. Well, uh, talking to some of the assistant coaches prior to this game throughout the week, they said, David, offensively, Trinity is a very dangerous. We think defensively they're much better. We know we're going to have to move the football against him. It could be a track meet. We're going to need some turnovers, and we're going to need the offense to play near-perfect football. Michael Fuller splits far side. Jason Williams in the slot far side. Carlton is the center. Tight end fleet near side on second down and four. Jonathan Williams the wide out, and now they start the clock. They'll bring Jason in motion. He takes the wide receiver reverse, breaks into the secondary. I think this is going to be a first down plus a defensive offsides call. Saya. Moyakioli again with a stop that time, but I think this is going to go in favor of Lee as Jason Williams. That's the old Oklahoma wide receiver play. When you get the snap, you give it to the receiver, and he picks up seven yards. They had him lined up about six yards outside of the line of scrimmage, and he takes off right as the snap comes before Preston calls him into motion, and he takes the run and cuts back inside and has a nice game. Oh, you had a kid named Josh Norman. They did that the national championship year, and it was a play that a lot of people just couldn't get used to. And now a lot of people run that play. That's what happens when you're successful. People steal what you use, and now other people using it, and now it's not as effective for most people. Triple set receivers for Lee. Preston Hill, run counter trade. Jason Williams up the middle, runs into the big defensive tackle, Nute. Right there in the middle of it, Ryan Foster, and 
Moiakioli, gain of a couple of yards on the counter trade. It's down to the 22-yard line with under a minute to go in the first quarter. Trinity 15, Robert E. Lee nothing. Trinity's defensive front is very active, and uh, what they do is they funnel a lot of tackles to their linebackers, so we're going to be calling Foster and Moiki Oli all night tonight. That's exactly right. He and uh, he is very active at 5'10", 228. Amy and Williams near side, double tight set. Preston Hill wants to throw. Here comes the blitz, gets off to the right. Now in trouble, throws it incomplete. Had receivers, Fleet, Amy, and Williams, but nobody seemed to separate, and... Well, Saya Moiakioli was right there in his face. He had to throw it out of bounds. It's third down and eight. He comes in to delay blitz, and nobody picks him up, and he forces Preston further outside than he wanted to go. And give credit to great coverage that time by Matt Stewart on the near side. So Lee now down 15 to nothing at home, coming off that long road trip to Columbus, Ohio, where they fell down early in that game. Showed some moxie to get back in at halftime in third quarter, but just couldn't punch it in. Jonathan Williams near side. Amy and Jackson far side. Four man front for Trinity. Back to throw Preston. Sets up in the pocket. In trouble and sacked at the 31 yard line. Big number 90. Henry Nute was there. As was the linebacker coming inside plus Mal Leota. And Lee is facing fourth and long at their 31 yard line. And that ends the first quarter. It has been all Euless Trinity, 15 to nothing Trojans. Back in one minute on News Talk 600, KTBB. The DQ Caramel Latte Resistance Test. Begin. <laughs> oh! Okay. <laughs> The irresistible new DQ Caramel Moulatte. Gooey caramel, rich coffee, and creamy DQ soft serve. DQ, something different. <laughs> if you want big, Don's TV and Home Electronics is East Texas' largest dealer for big screens, big brands, big service, and great big deals. From big plasmas to HD-ready home theater projection systems to big home theater sound. And our sales and service associates are eager to help you with big smiles. Don's TV and Home Electronics. Now that's big. Lee now faces fourth down from their 31 and 17 to go. Down 15 to nothing. Had a nice drive going, but the sack that time of Hill, who's in the shotgun. Four-man front for Trinity. Here comes the snap. Preston sets up throws he's got a man open Amy 15 at the 10 inside the five and what a huge play by Preston Hill to the big junior 27 yards to Jacob Amy and oh my goodness did they need that wow that was a huge play and the line held up that time and gave Preston up plenty of time Preston patiently found a receiver cutting back inside across the middle as Amy he makes the catch wide open and dances down inside the five where he's brought down by Pinkerton and Vitae for Trinity Jacob Amy entering this game had caught two passes. He has three tonight in the first quarter in one play. Inside the five, down to the three. Bailey is back in the game at center for Robert E. Lee. Carlton moves to guard and Kirkpatrick at left tackle. Power, full house backfield. Hill, Williams, touchdown! And he knifed through and barely got touched. And Saya Miyakioli after the play Throws a little swipe of the elbow to Robert Lee running back Jamal Mitchell. Lynn or John Landis that time leads the way. That's a very important that fourth down play. I'll tell you who you have to get credit to was the offensive line. They had given up the sack, but they gave Preston plenty of time. And what nice touch on that third down or fourth down conversion. And here comes the Lee extra point team now trying to get to within eight. They've had two extra points that have been blocked. Cleaver in, Holder is Jackson. Here's the kick by Cleaver and he drilled it. 11.26 to go in the first half. Trinity 15, Robert Lee 7, back in 60 seconds on News Talk 600, KTBB. Hi, I'm Whitney at Mike Powell Auto Group, where if you give us a chance, we will save you money. There's still time to save with Employee Pricing Plus on new Jeeps. You pay what we pay and not a penny more. If a new Mazda is what you're looking for, save on Ultimate Zoom Zoom. 
with the Mazda S plan exclusively here at Mike Pyle, now is the best time ever to save on new Mazdas and Jeeps. Help us fight hunger in East Texas. Come take a test drive and we'll provide enough food for a hungry child for a week. Mike Powell, going the extra mile against hunger. When you join ETMC EMS, you get peace of mind. Because an annual membership fee as low as $48 covers you and all qualified members of your household for emergency and medically necessary non-emergency transports, which would cost an average of $600 each. And you get the added peace of mind of knowing that the region's most advanced EMS system will answer your call for help. Membership deadline is September 30th, so don't delay. Call or visit the website and join ETMC EMS today. Robert E. Lee gets on the board, faced a fourth down and 17 from their 31 yard line of Trinity. And Preston Hill, cool as a cucumber, finding the junior Jacob Amy and then Jason Williams score. Yeah, David, 11 plays, 72 yards in three minutes and 59 seconds for Robert E. Lee as they have answered to try to get back in this ball game. Here is Taylor Matlock with his first ever play as a varsity player at the 20 yard line, Trinity out to the 25 and nice job by Darius Porter to make the stop on special teams. Trinity will start with good field position at the 30 yard line. Their offense has had the ball twice a methodical ground chewing drive in the first possession. The second possession, it was the throwing arm of Trevor Vitito and all the time he wanted to find his receivers. First it was the tight end Scroggins and then it was also Marcus King for the touchdown of 28 yards and the lead defense now, maybe a little extra life, had a little more time to relax, get some adjustments. They'll have Taj Lee and Carlo Lawler at defensive end on this drive. Vitito runs the stretch to Nance off left tackle. Faber was there at about the 33 yard line to stop him short of the 35, gain of four. As Dimitri Nance of 5'9 or 5'10, 195 seniors put up some big numbers for Trinity's football program. But that time they run left side and what happens is Lee gets a better job of a push actually and doesn't let the Trinity line get that much push on the play and four or five red shirts are there to converge. A good swarming effect for the defense. Lee's got to try to get enough people in space if they can and then try to start ripping and grabbing. Might be also something they're going to need tonight, some turnovers. Here comes Nance up the middle. Nothing there as Lee's defense. He's still not down, but Wall helps polish him off. Faber was there early. So was Michael Wall, Matt Uzel, and Jacoby McKenzie was there. Now third down and five. And the one thing that's got to scare you a little bit if you're Randy Huffstickler is that the play action, he had all, nobody on Scroggins, nobody was on King, so Lee's secondary somewhat confused in those passing situations. Yeah, that's what's happened. They just left men wide open and uh, got to watch that now on a big third down play for the defense. Third and five, the offense feeling pretty good. Dimitri Nance splits far side here with Adrian Beer. They run the quarterback draw to Vitito and he's got a first down. That's a big play. Vitito is such a weapon himself at running the football. Matt Uzel was there. He really just never got hit. He just fell down after a pickup of seven yards, and the Trinity offensive possession continues. And Jeremy Moore had him near the backfield, but he was able to skirt free and get by him as Moore laid in a heap about three yards into the uh, backfield, but he was unable to bring down Vitito, who picks up a big first down. Jonathan Williams back in the game at Bandit for Robert E. Lee. They'll bring King near side, double tight set. Scroggins the H-back straight eye at the 42. Scroggins in motion. They run it to Handy up the middle. Has about four just outside the Trinity 45-yard line. Jonathan Williams there, but a gain of give him three out to the 45 second down and seven. 920 to go first half. 15 to 7 Trinity. I give credit to Rod, Roderick Brown and Michael Wall who helped to uh, wrap up on Handy as well as he made a surge, but he was knocked back by three or four red shirts. At the 45 yard line, Mark Brotherton, the sophomore, back in the defensive tackle. Handy with three carries for 12 yards. Nance has 11 for 68. Vitito has the seven yard run. At the 45. Scroggins in motion. Here's a flag down. The tight end on the or the uh, wide receiver, 84 Buck moved early, and this is going to cost Trinity five yards. That's Mitch just, prayed to the referee. That's the kind of thing they need to help help them as well tonight, David. If these kind of things can help thwart dri uh, drives and slow down Trinity, then uh, Lee's off for these uh, miscues that Trinity has had three already in the ballgame. At the 40-yard line, Adrian Beard. 
and Hyder are the cornerbacks. Cuba and Moore are the safeties. And, of course, uh, Jonathan Williams, the bandit. Moore and Williams play up on the line. It's a three-man front, but Lee at times can have five or six people there based on their formations. Buck near side. Vitito with the H-back handy. And he'll go in motion to the near side. little play action pass. Vitito has all day. Now flush from the pocket. Throws down field. King open caught. First down at the 30. Oh, he dropped it. Very nice throw by Vitito. Tim Hyder had to come from all the way over to the other side of the field. But King had that thing at the lead 30 and dropped it. And a break, it's third down and 12. Well, Vitito did have all day to throw the ball, David, as he kind of pulled out of the pocket. But credit Lee's secondary on that play for doing a better job of coverage. And King, as he was bringing the ball in, had it slapped free by Hyder, it appeared, and the ball came un, un, away from his body. So third and 12 here, 8.24 to go in the first half, 15-7. to seven. Trinity led 15-0. Lee scored on the Williams touchdown run. Big third down here. Vitito back to throw in the pocket. Throwing deep, man open, caught, first down 40. Boy, he is cool. As the other side of the pillow, as one of the ESPN sportscasters used to say, Stuart Scott, and that's exactly what he is, but he has all day to throw the football, and he's also got a lot of height, too. 6'3", and a catch for a gain of a first down and 22 yards. And that was a perfectly placed pass, as you mentioned, but Buck did a great job of reaching up higher and bringing it down, and he's six foot four, and the pass was right where only he could catch the football. So Buck has caught a pass of 22, Scroggins of 67, and King of 28. And that's what makes this team so much more special. They could throw it last year, but they could throw it efficiently this year. In motion, handy, Nance up the middle. Grinds down inside the 40 to the 35 and down to the lead 33 yard line with 7.45 to go. And the lead crowd obviously themselves kind of going, man, what's going on? And a, a little noise wouldn't hurt. Gain of six yards on first down from Dimitri Nance. Well, you see a little bit of dejection too from the red shirts down there right now. They have them backed up in the third and long and uh, just a nice completion on the prior third down for Trinity to pick up the first down. So here comes Trinity, two split receivers, Buck to the near side. Handy is the H-back. On second down and four, Buck goes in motion. Nance the deep back. They run him off left tackle. Matt Uzell knocks him down short of the first down at the 31-yard line. Matt, the senior linebacker, gains a couple of yards. It's third down and three. Yeah, and he does a great job of pursuing from the outside. He's unblocked, and he comes right in and wraps up on number five, uh, Nance. And also uh, Lawler's now in the game too, David. Carlo Lawler and Taj Lee rotating the defensive end with Roderick Brown and Colby Ray. McKenzie and Brotherton and Trimble rotate quite a bit at tackle. Faber, the middle linebacker, trying to encourage his football team. And it's third and three, just maybe less than that at the lead 31-yard line. 15-7 Trinity. Scroggins the H-back. Nance left tackle, short of the first down. Tim Heider came in from the cornerback spot to make the stop and knock Nance down for perhaps a loss of a foot. Trinity's offense looking over to the sideline. The offensive coordinator is Chris Jensen. The defensive co-coordinators, by the way, including Donald Tryon, who played at Longview High School, and Peter G is the defensive coordinator as well. And here's a fourth down and three for Trinity. Play clock is down to 12, and I think they're going to take their time. And guess who they're bringing in? The six foot four, 260 pound defensive end, Henry Nute, to bring in an extra H back, but they're going to call timeout first. Under six minutes to go. First half, our score. Robert Lee down eight, 15 to seven. We're back in 30 seconds on News Talk 600, KTBB. The DQ Caramel Mulatte Resistance Test. Begin. <laughs> The irresistible new DQ Caramel Moulatte. Gooey caramel, rich coffee, and creamy DQ soft serve. DQ, something different. Five minutes, 56 seconds to go in the first half. It's 15 to seven, Trinity. They led 15, nothing. Lee with a big fourth down conversion on a play from Preston Hill to Jacob Amy, and then the touchdown run by Jason Williams, 15 to seven. But Trinity had a big third down conversion in this drive. 
They've had a quarterback keeper for seven and a 22-yard pass and another third down. Now it's fourth and three. Trojans at the lead 31-yard line. The lead defense encouraging the crowd to get off of their seats and try to make a difference. Trinity has a pretty large crowd themselves, as I mentioned. Big, huge offensive line against the lead quickness. Double tight set. Scroggins in motion, fourth and three. Vitito, deep pitch back to Nance, right tackle. First down, maybe a touchdown. 10-5, touchdown Trinity. Right behind big number 77, Saya Falahola, who threw the lead block along with Folau. And they had him bottled up, but he broke the tackle. And you see that a lot on fourth down and short. You see the long touchdown runs. It was kind of reminiscent of Vondrell McGee's breakout against Lee last year on a running play. And uh, he was wrapped up and brought uh, apparently brought down, but he breaks free into the secondary. David takes it in for six for the Trojans. That's a great run by yep. Dimitri Nance. Here's the extra point, which is good. Almost blocked by Lee, but he got through the hands of Takarian Cuba. Dimitri Nance goes 31 yards on fourth and three, and Trinity leads 22-7. 5.47 to go, first half. If you want big, Don's TV and Home Electronics is East Texas' largest dealer for big screens, big brands, big service, and great big deals. From big plasmas to HD-ready home theater projection systems to big home theater sound. And our sales and service associates are eager to help you with big smiles. Don's TV and Home Electronics. Now that's big. In the game of life, there are no timeouts, only time wasted. The path you choose now determines your future. But where can you go to find a sense of purpose? There is a place where team spirit steps off the field and into the classroom, where no victory goes unnoticed, and there's no such thing as wasted time. That place is Tyler Junior College, living life in color, never black and white. Come to Tyler Junior College. We're changing the game. We're changing lives. The lead defense stiffens a little bit. They still give up the seven, though. They had two third down conversions and a fourth down conversion, and the Trojans score on their third consecutive possession. Very impressive, David. 10 play, 70 yard drive, and 433. Nance bursting out with a 31 yard touchdown for the Trojans. All right, here comes the kick from the 40. They've been pooching it, but they ripped this one deep, and Bork will feel it two yards deep in the end zone. At the 5, 10 looks for the wedge, 15 20. Breaks a tackle out to the 27. Nice run back, back by Josh Burke to the 27 yard line. As he took that thing two yards deep in the end zone, he was a JV running back a year ago. And Jamie Lee obviously down 15, a little shell shock right now. Yeah, I think you are right, David. J-Law, defensive coordinator, linebacker coach, talking to his guys over on the sideline here. Same problem they've been having really all season long, getting to the spot but just not wrapping up, telling his guys they have to wrap up on each and every play, also telling them wants lots and lots of gang tackles. Andrew Bailey has checked back in the game after that injury he had earlier. Preston Hill under center tight end right side play action pass wants to set up a screen he has a man Williams block 30 here comes a flag down breaks a tackle out near the 40 not sure if this was a face mask on the tackle or a holding call against Lee and it might have been a holding call against Lee at about the 31 Kyle Rutherford with the flag on the near side of the field as they set up the screen and Jason with a nice job of making the catch and he was trying to get around the corner but Bailey, because of that leg injury, was not able to make the turn. And this is going to come back, it looks, against, well, we'll see. Could be a, could have still been a grab and just a tad of the face mat. Yep, it was. On the initial grab, just a five-yard penalty against Trinity as they kind of rake the face mask of Jason Williams. So a pickup of a first down and a five-yard markoff, an 11-yard pickup. From the 27 to the 38, and a five-yard penalty out to the 43. Preston Hill is five of six right now for 66 yards. First and 10, Williams now in motion. They run Tucker off left tackle. And he get a tough yard and then gets seven. Chase Carlton, the left guard, leading the way. And nice job by Nathan Tucker. He had that 62-yard touchdown catch a week ago. And Nathan Tucker's, they put Jason Williams that time as the decoy. 
But Carlton and Kirkpatrick made it happen. They turned out the defenders in front of them, and Kyle Tyliota, and just a nice low to the ground run for Tucker. Joe Licchio has checked out for Trinity on second and three lead at midfield. Play action bootleg. Preston Hill wants to turn the corner, and he does make some move, and will be close to a first down and gets driven into the ground at the 47-yard line. That, here comes a late hit maybe at the end of the play or possibly on something that was said at the end of that play as Preston on the bootleg near the first down and then two players come in to polish him off and now we'll check the flag here. Lee offensively is going to have to score a bunch of points tonight. It's obvious the defense just trying to do everything they can. This is going to be 15 yards late hit against Trinity down to the 31 yard line. First down, gain of three for Preston on the bootleg, and now 15, and with 4.42 to go, Lee down 15, needing another scoring drive. Yeah, they are, David, and this is what happens to very aggressive teams like Trinity. They they get into this mode, and uh, you have a lot of penalties from these kind of guys, and that's five already in the ballgame against the Trojans. Jonathan Williams, far side Williams. Jonathan now chasing in the slot, and here comes a flag. I think it's procedure. Somebody may have moved. Michael Mason, the tight end, jumped early. And remember that drive that Lee had down 24 to 12 against Coleraine. They recovered the fumble down in Coleraine territory. They got down inside the 15, and they had a jump offside procedure call, then a sack, and they never offensively recovered from that. That was their chance to get back in that game. Well, let's hopefully this doesn't uh, portend that kind of ending for, for this current drive as they're marching right down the field. Update that JT Kilgore game in a moment. Jonathan Williams and Jacob Amy near side. Preston play action back to throw. Nice job picking him up. Pass caught. Amy, what a throw. What a catch. He took a shot by Pinkerton. That is a big time throw by Preston Hill in a gain of 18 in the first down. And hey, the offensive line starting to give him a little time. Jin right in the game to help out as well. Yeah, the line is protecting very well, but a great route run by Amy. Well, he's grown up a lot in this quarter and a half. That's four catches, right, David? He makes four a nice catches for 68 yards for Jacob Amy. Nice curl in and his rifle right on the spot by Preston. Michael Fuller in the game, splits far side. Offset eye for Lee. Fleet is the H-back. Make that Mason. They run Jason up the middle. Hurdles inside the 20. Got a couple. Down to 19, 18-yard line. As they just took him and ran him right at the big guys inside, including Kautai and Fine. Poli, Fine Feo. Iaki is uh, one of the defensive tackles. I want to thank Jay Fitz, by the way, one of the uh, uh, assistant coaches for Trinity. He has been in contact with me throughout the week on a, a lot of the pronunciations, and we do appreciate him for that. Second down and eight. Want to make sure we give the kids their proper credit. Double tight set for Lee. One setback. Williams back to throw. Nope, here comes another flag down. So Trinity has helped. Lee on this drive with 20 yards and penalties, a face mask, and then a 15-yard late hit. But now Lee starting to blow up the drive with procedure calls. And on the left-hand side of the offensive line, it moves him back outside the 20 with 3.35 to go in the opening half. John Tyler jumped on Kilgore to lead 6 to nothing, and now has fallen behind 7-6 in the second quarter in what has got to be a packed house at RE St. John Stadium. We've got a great crowd here, too. Second down lead, 13 at their 20 at the Trinity 23. Preston Hill play action pass. Sets up in the pocket. Throws. Pass caught. Amy inside the 15. Breaks a tackle inside the 10. And may have picked up a first down. Preston Hill steps up in front of Nute. Throws it to Jacob Amy. You talk about a young man, as you mentioned, Randy, who's come up big tonight. Gain of 13 yards and just shy, it appears, of a first down. Well, I'll tell you no, what. No, he got the yeah. first down at the eight. They've signaled first down the umpire has. What's happening is he, he's gaining more and more confidence, and he's he's catching these these absolute bullets that uh, Preston's rifling into him, and they're, they're growing together right now tonight. 3-13 to go first half. Double tight set. Williams the lone setback. Three-man front for Trinity. Preston Hill runs the stretch. Jason right tackle. Puts his head inside the five and buries down to the three and a nice lead block by Tyler Fleet. Trimble Landis Bailey 
Jen Wright and Kirkpatrick and Carlton involved and Jason Williams. He's had a lot of spectacular runs, Randy, but that was a tough run for a gain of four. Well, he's very, very strong, and he gets those legs moving. And you do, uh, you know, you noted the offensive line has a good push on that play as they push back Fine and Nuite, the big hosses on the left side of the line for Trinity. They're going to move the ball. It looked like it might have been accidentally kicked by a player when they broke the huddle. It's at the Trinity three. Two minutes and 46 seconds remaining in the first half. Euless Trinity 22 and Robert E. Lee 7. Second down and goal, Lee at the Trinity three-yard line. They'll bring Fuller near side. Kirkpatrick and Jen Wright are the left guard and tackle. Preston Hill the quarterback. Full house backfield. Williams at the five. Dives. Touchdown. Two very tough runs. And a nice lead block by Cameron White, the 5'11", 190-pound junior. And Jason Williams has cut the lead for Trinity down to nine. Jamal Mitchell in the game as well for Lee. Boy, that's a very impressive drive and the big third down conversion on the play to Jacob Amy. Here comes Cleaver now. Marcus Jackson, the backup quarterback, is the holder. Snap by Carlton. Kick is up and it is good. Lee's offense answers again. 2.25 to go, first half. Trinity 22, Robert Lee 14. Back in one minute on News Talk 600, KTBB. Mike Powell introduces a new kind of food drive to East Texas. One in four East Texas children are growing up without enough food to eat. Even minor malnutrition can impair physical growth and diminish learning ability. This is your chance to join us in the fight against hunger. Come into Mike Pyle, take a test drive, and we'll provide enough food to feed a hungry child for an entire week. Mike Pyle, going the extra mile in the fight against hunger. The DQ Caramel Malate Resistance Test. Begin. The irresistible new DQ Caramel Mulatte. Gooey caramel, rich coffee, and creamy DQ soft serve. DQ, something different. 22-14, Trinity leading Robert E. Lee with 2.25 to go in the first half. David, the Red Raiders scoring summary, eight plays, 73 yards in 3.14. Jason Williams does the honors again, his second TD of the night from three yards out. Lee throwing the ball tonight as well as they have all year long. Here comes Taylor Matlock with the kickoff, pretty deep. This is handy at about the 10. It goes through his legs back into the end zone. And Trinity will start with their deepest field position at the 20-yard line. Last time they started at the 30. And now the lead defense, which has gotten a little bit better as the game has progressed, very similar to the Coleraine game. But they were able to shut Coleraine down completely, or well, not completely, but in most cases last year or last week in the second half, They've got a big time chore. Now remember, if Lee can somehow come up with a stop here, I'm not saying that can happen, or if it will happen, that gives the offense the momentum, but Lee does get the ball to start the second half. Down by eight right now, but they hope it's at least no more than eight as they head to halftime, but there's a lot of time left when you've got the offensive weapons that Trinity has and the offensive weapons that Lee has. There's all sorts of time. Dust, Justin Hansen in the game at the bandit spot for Lee. Vitito up the middle. Gain of about five. Look at that huge offensive line just pushing and shoving. Gain of five on a play right up the gut, and that's a tough run by Handy. Now, you hear about Dimitri Nance, Randy, but Handy's a 5'11", 193 senior. He is averaging well over 10 yards a carry this year on four touchdowns. Yeah, he's a little bit taller of the two, but he, probably not as powerful. He just gets behind his line on that play. Uh, it took Quentin Nicholson coming in from his corner quarterback spot to make the tackle along with Jeremy Moore. He was pretty powerful there. Michael Wall, by the way, trying to knock him down and just held him up like a calf roper. Double tight set. Trinity going to that two-minute offense now. Motion far side is Babcock. Here's the handoff inside and handy has nowhere to go. May have lost a yard. Not quite a lot. Uh, Roderick Brown, the junior, 6'1", 191, and McKenzie double team that time. He got back to the line of scrimmage. Minute 29 to go. Okay, they've thrown the ball. So has Preston Hill. So has Trevor Vitito, and he has been very impressive as well. Lee needs a pass rush, and they need to get on the receivers on third and four. Trinity at their 26, and they're wasting a lot of time. 
Play clock has just though started, so that's one of the reasons why they're waiting for the call. Vitito, remember saw him last year early in that win against Lee. He looked like he's a pretty good player. He was so much better as the year progressed, and Steve Lineweaver talking about his leadership. They don't get many quarterbacks that return a second year. Third and four, Trinity at the 26. They run Nance on the draw play, and he's got a first down. At the 33-yard line, he picked up six with now under 50 seconds to go in the first half, 22-14 Trojans. You have to watch out for the big bang that could happen here momentarily for Trinity. They're just kind of very, being very patient, almost content with an eight-point lead uh, to run out the clock, but I don't think we're uh, done seeing some fireworks here on this drive. Under 50 seconds, now 40. Now they have double receivers, Vitito up the middle, Nance knocked down for a short gain. Wall on the stop for Robert E. Lee and Michael Wall, who did not play last year, starting to become involved in multiple double-digit tackle games, and Trinity seems to be happy. It appears to let this thing go to halftime, 22-14 with that quarterback and the gun that Fittito has. You would think that they'd let him uh, kind of wheel it a little bit, but it looks like they're going to be content to let the thing run out. Our score. Euless Trinity 22, Robert E. Lee 14 at halftime. And I think Mike Owens has got to be thrilled, you won't say this often at Rose Stadium, to be up or down by just eight. Jamie? All right, Coach, first of all, eight-point deficit heading into the half. Do you feel like it could have been much worse? Well, I'm real proud of our guys because we're giving away big-time tonnage up front and, uh, and speed and everything else. So, I mean, they're fighting them tooth and toenail and doing everything they can. And, you know, I think we're in the game. We got a chance. We get a break here and there to, to maybe win the thing. Your offense really got it going in that second quarter. Do you feel like you're going to need to score a lot to win this game? Oh, yeah. We're going to have to take the ball and put it in the end zone because, you know, they're going to wear us out. They're 300 pounds across the front, and, and we're, you know, 180. You know, so it's uh, – yeah, it's going to be tough, but, but you know, we're fighting them every inch of the way. I'm real proud of them right now, but we got to play a second half. All right, thanks, Coach. Good luck. All right, Jamie, thank you very much. 22-14 uh, Trinity, Euless Trinity, the Trojans by eight over Robert E. Lee, but Lee has scored on their last couple of possessions. If you want big, Don's TV and Home Electronics is East Texas' largest dealer for big screens, big brands, big service, and great big deals. From big plasmas to HD-ready home theater projection systems to big home theater sound. And our sales and service associates are eager to help you with big smiles. Don's TV and Home Electronics. Now that's big. Ladies and gentlemen, join me now in viewing a spectacular halftime show. Presented to you by Robert E. Lee High School. We'd like to sit back and enjoy the incredible Southern Bell Trophy and the fabulous Red Raider Band.
and the Lee family. You are all in our thoughts and our prayers.
Card shopping can be stressful. With all the clutter out there, it's hard to tell what to buy. But at Jim Lozier's Fire Station Auto Center, we believe that the simplest way is the best way. So we offer a large selection of quality pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs, priced to sell with no hassles. Each vehicle has been through a 20-point inspection for quality assurance. You can shop in comfort under the awnings and check out our newly expanded lot with more inventory than ever before. Jim Lozier's Fire Station Auto Center on the corner of Glenwood and Vine and Tyler. When you join ETMC EMS, you get peace of mind. Because an annual membership fee as low as $48 covers you and all qualified members of your household for emergency and medically necessary non-emergency transports, which would cost an average of $600 each. And you get the added peace of mind of knowing that the region's most advanced EMS system will answer your call for help. Membership deadline is September 30th, so don't delay. Call or visit the website and join ETMC EMS today. Mike Powell introduces a new kind of food drive to East Texas. One in four East Texas children are growing up without enough food to eat. Even minor malnutrition can impair physical growth and diminish learning ability. This is your chance to join us in the fight against hunger. Come into Mike Pile, take a test drive, and we'll provide enough food to feed a hungry child for an entire week. Mike Pile, going the extra mile in the fight against hunger. We are back at Trinity Mother Francis Rose Stadium in Tyler, where Robert E. Lee will field the second half kickoff from the Trinity Trojans who kick off from the west end zone. 22-14 Trinity leading by eight in the third meeting between these schools in a year. Here's a little pooch kick that Matt used, or excuse me, that uh, Lee will, uh-oh, it's on the ground. That thing went off the chest of Nathan Tucker and I think bounced into a huge pile at about the 35 yard line. The only question is, and Trinity says they have the football, is whether or not the ball ever hit the sideline, and it did not, it is out of bounds, it did. Kyle Rutherford right there with the call, and Lee gets a big break. That went off the chest of Nathan Tucker, or Seaton at about the 25, and bounced towards the sideline, and the Red Raiders will get the ball at the 33 yard line, and boy, that can uh, ruin all the uh, halftime game planning right there but here come the Lee offensive lineman Kirk Patrick Carlton and Jen Wright rotating at guard Bailey the center who's been injured Trimble and Landis and we'll see Lynn Gibson quite a bit Fleet the tight end Michael Mason the tight end and Jacob Amy stacks it on the near side Tucker the lone setback wing back reverse to Williams and he gets a couple out to the 35 Jason Williams held to 38 yards in the first half. Ten carries, but did score the two touchdowns. And Lee with the chance here, because they get the second half kickoff, Randy, to get themselves in one kind of a, a track meet that looks like we're going to have all night long. Well, the, what, yeah, they just have to have a good drive, and hopefully it ends up in points right now so they can put themselves back into the ball game. But they're not out of the ball game by any stretch, but a touchdown on this drive would definitely uh, be for an entertaining second half. Mason now is the H-back. They run uh, Williams right tackle. He gets about three or four. Very tough run. We've seen Jason. He's not been able to get loose. He had the 13-yard run early. He got about five right there, just out to about the 40. Brings up third and three as they went right at Trinity. And, and Lee here with a huge drive. They had one three and out to start the game. That allowed them to fall behind by 15. But here's a, her, a, a huge third and three. A trap play and uh, give credit to Chase Carlton pulling from the left side at his guard position to make a nice seat, a peel up block on that play. So Preston Hill with Jason Williams, the lone setback. Three receivers set. Tight end fleet, far side right hash mark. Preston Hill back to throw. Sideline pass caught. Marcus Jackson close to a first down at the 44 he's got it he's very close maybe not the 44 he needed the 43 and maybe a length of a football and I think he has it very nice job Preston Hill is as sharp as a knife tonight he's now eight of nine for 102 yards as he picked up four right there. Well, you can tell that he has his timing down, David. It's just really a pinpoint timing type of pass play. Jackson runs a little four-yard curl, and the ball is right there. As soon as he turns around, and hits him right in the middle of his number three. Jamie, we're going to come to you for an update from uh, some conversations. He always likes to talk to Randy Huffstickler at halftime, and we'll get to him in a moment. First down, crowd is quiet. Two to receivers here. Preston Hill hands off to Jason, bounces into his offensive line, bounces outside near midfield and has a first down. Dragged down by the D 
defensive end Mal Liotta, six foot two fifty two, and Jason does a good job of that. When he runs into somebody, he keeps his feet going. He's big enough to bounce off, and he picked up five. Well, Alex Kaltai, the defensive tackle for Trinity, had kind of bottled up the line of scrimmage, and Jason bounced off the back of Kirk Patrick, kept his footing, and spun out to the near side of the field and picked up a nice gain on first down. Second down and five. This is a big drive to start the second half. Lee is down eight. Tucker now the lone setback. Williams goes in motion. Here comes the handoff. Jason, right tackle, nudges into Trinity territory, but I think Lee forced an offsides call against the Trojans. When they see Williams in motion, Saya Moiakioli, the senior linebacker who's been very active tonight, may have uh, come up with the tackle, but this could cost Trinity five yards. I think that play is creating problems for the Trinity defense. They see Williams, they know he's out there, Randy, mm -hmm. and they react to him. Let's go to Jamie for an update from Halftime Talks with Randy Huffstickler. Jamie? Well, first of all, David, Coach Huffstickler telling me he thought his defense settled down in that second quarter and played pretty good, but not winning third down, getting the long third down but they're picking up those third downs in the second half. They plan to put more pressure on the quarterback. Also, head coach Mike Owens came up to me and said he sees in person exactly what he saw on tape. That's a very good football field or football team across the field. But he also saw his team when they were down 15 to nothing, coming off the loss, not put in the towel. They are trying to come back here. Here's the wing back counter to Tucker. Not much there, and he's going to lose a yard. Based on the mark, he'll get back to the line of scrimmage. This is one of the quietest crowds of about 10,000 or 12,000. Here are some updates now in 12-5A. Kilgore about to start the second half, leading John Tyner 7-6 at halftime at RE St. John Stadium. And Longview rolling past Freeport Evangel, the highly ranked Lobos, 31-14 at halftime against Evangel. And Evangel, who's always had that tough, tough schedule, may have bitten off more than they can chew themselves this year with what's going on with them. 8.40 to go, third quarter. Lee with a second down and 10 as Tucker got nothing. Here's play action, bootleg Preston Hill. Turns the corner, now wants to run, 45. Nice job inside the 45 and a flag for a late hit. DeMarcus Cummings got to Preston Hill at the end of the play. Got him by the collar. He picked up eight yards on the bootleg, and he's out of bounds and a 15-yard penalty here for possibly dragging him out of bounds that could give Lee a first down inside the 25. The problem was, David, he caught him out of bounds and then hog tied him around his neck and rang him on down, but five yards, they were almost to the track before the play ended, and what a great block by Marcus Jackson to peel out on the cornerback to allow Preston to get inside. And Jacob Amy, who has been a star tonight, because of his catching ability with the five catches tonight, also did a seal block that time for Robert E. Lee. And hey, hey, they got the ball at the 22-yard line here. And did you hear, I don't know if anyone else could notice this, when he was talking to Jamie, Mike Owens, I think, was thrilled at home to be down by eight because that thing could have been a landslide early. His team has kept their composure to this point. And down by a score, Preston Hill. Jason Williams, right tackle, makes a man miss, makes another one, first down. Inside the 10, first and goal, Robert E. Lee and Torrey Pinkerton, the safety, had to wrestle him down, and Bailey and Carlton tag team, the big tackle, Alex Kotai, and 15 for Jason Williams to the eight. Well, they get his great surge, does Robert E. Lee, and that little bit of a delay opened up the hole as Trimble and company on the right side did a great job of peeling open a nice hole, and of course, the nice running back Jason Williams as he finds a hole and darts through it. Approaching the eight minute mark of the third quarter, Looking at the auxiliary scoreboard, double tight set, Jason the lone back. At the eight, Trinity's bouncing around, Preston Hill, play action, no call, no whistle, here comes a flag. And I think that maybe that Poli Fine may have jumped again. And uh, Jamie, the center, Andrew Bailey, may have caught somebody with their hands in the cookie jar, correct? That's exactly right, David. One of the defensive tackles gets across the line of scrimmage into the neutral zone, and Andrew Bailey does the smart thing. As soon as he's over there, snaps the ball while he's in the neutral zone. So this should be encroachment against Trinity. Trinity, uh, again, defensively trying to create their own confusion. I think this, uh, again, will wait for the call from Mitch Prater. And it is going to be defensive offsides against Trinity, and it's going to be first and goal now at the four. Steve Lineweaver wanting to talk to Gary Chalk on the far side, and he's ex 
I guess he likes the explanation. He wasn't animated. He was upset with his team. This is something we look at, David. Right now, that's the eighth penalty by my count against Trinity for 65 yards, and Lee only has two for 10 thus far in the game. Full house backfield. Jason Williams off right guard. Gets a couple of yards down inside the two-yard line, and they have brought a couple of new players in on the goal line situation. Jamal Mitchell and Cameron White. Mitchell's a sophomore, and White is a junior leading the way. Ryan Jinwright comes in at left guard for Robert E. Lee, or maybe the extra H-back. Nope, here comes Carlton. That gives him a little more beef. Chase Carlton at 205, and Jinwright at 280 pounds. Second down and goal for Robert E. Lee as Williams gets three, and it's second and goal at just outside the one with 7.20 to go in the opening drive of the third quarter with lead down by eight. Hill, quarterback, keeper, down near the goal line. He, oh, he fumbled the football, and this could be a foot race. Trinity has recovered and run it out to the 15-yard line. 55, Joey Nikio as Preston Hill and a quarterback keeper down near the goal line and he fumbles the football and Trinity recovers out to the 15 and Jason Williams saved a 100 yard fumble recovery for a touchdown. What a huge play by the Trinity Trojans defense. Yeah, David and Preston had kind of stumbled off to the right and then dove back in and all of a sudden the ball pops free and you mentioned Jason Williams did a great job of finding the defender who picked the ball up and ran him down to, to save a sheer touchdown the other way. You could not have diagrammed a better start to the second half if you're Mike Owens and staff, Dow Wynn and Gary Fleet, the co-offense coordinators, as Preston Hill tried to sn sneak it in from the right-hand side and fumbled the football. And now here comes Trinity on offense. Dimitri Nance, uh oh right tackle, 35. It's a foot race with Michael Wall. Midfield, 30 of Lee. Wall trips him up at about the 20. You talk about an unbelievable turnaround. Lee with a second down and goal at the one. Trinity recovers, and they have a first and 10 at the Lee 16-yard line. And Dimitri Nance goes 69 yards, and Michael Wall somehow kept up with him and forced him out of bounds at the 12 at the 15. He ran real hard to do so at about the 45-yard line and uh, he chugged with him for the last 30 before he finally decided to reach out and he forced him out of bounds at the 16th. But Handy found an opening behind the right side of his line doing a nice job of blocking up Dimitri front Nance, 69 yards, 69 yards. He has 182 yards on 16 carries and he gets a breather. And a, an unbelievable turnaround in momentum. Double tight set, they go play action, no Handy off the left. Tackle, stretch play, favor, here's a flag down and cleaned up at about the 12, but this is gonna cost Trinity as Gary Chalk with the, uh, the linesman with the flag on the far side. And Trinity might have to have another 10 yard. The, the Trinity, very impressive, lots of penalties tonight. A Couple of them have been on the defensive end, this will cost them 10 more. Now Steve Weinweaver out on the field and wanting more and more of an explanation, not happy at all. Uh, so. Boy, I tell you what, Preston was very close to the line, but he didn't get the call, fumbles the ball, and next thing you know, Jason Williams saved a touchdown. He made a great tackle, otherwise it's a touchdown, a 100-yard touchdown. So Trinity holding call will knock him back to the 25-yard line. Mark Brotherton back in the game. Lee, if they scored, was a two-point conversion away from tying the game up to start the third quarter. Now here comes Trinity. They scored on their first three possessions, and the only one they didn't was when they ran the clock out to end the half. Double sight, tight set, very crunched. Vitato with a play action pass, rolls. Now pressured, tries to get away, scrambles at about the 30. Now throws, passes, tipped away. What a nice play by Takarian Cuba. Cuba at about the 12 yard line. Matt Uzel with pressure. Faber was there with pressure. Randy Huffstickler told Jamie that. And here's another flag down at about the 27 yard line. And I'm not sure if this could have been defensive holding against Lee, keeping the player from getting into the, uh, the passing route. But to carry in Cuba, knock that thing down. Personal foul against Robert E. Lee. And that's an automatic first down. Boy, that's a huge mistake by Lee as they stop Trinity on a, would be second down and 17, and a personal foul against Robert E. Lee. And Trinity has the ball first down at the Lee 13 yard line. In the game for Lee is Taj Lee, 42 comes in.
Colby Ray is checked out. And apparently the call was roughing the passer against Lee on the quarterback, Trevor Vitito. Six and a half to go. Clock will start back up. 22-14 Trojans of Euless Trinity. And Jonathan Williams in for Justin Hansen. Hansen's one of those who's been in and stuck his head in there a few times. Unbalanced line left, deep pitch back to Nancy's got a huge hole. At the 10, down near the five, and close to another first down. Tripped up in the secondary by yet again to carry in Cuba, who was there for Robert E. Lee, but a big gainer down inside the Lee five, and a gain of eight yards. Give him nine, it's second down and a yard. Give credit to the right guard, David. Manawaki Baita, he pulled out in handy also the fullback with a nice seal block too. And there was a nice wide corridor, as you mentioned, wide open for Nance, and he danced on down inside Lee's five. So they have the ball. They uh, Again, Trinity has the lead of eight, the ball. Could be tied up, but it's not. And that's what counts the scoreboard. And here comes that massive offensive line. Double tight set, Scroggins the H-back. Nance. Can't get anywhere, breaks a tackle, bounces outside, and he will score. Touchdown, Trinity. Lee had him bottled up. I think Jess Roberts may have had him along with uh, one of the defensive ends, and he broke away and scores. Got away from Quet Nicholson, and Dimitri Nance has scored again. He has nine touchdowns this year, 28 to 14, Trinity by 14. Just a fantastic individual effort. He had three or four red shirts seemingly bringing him down he just breaks out to the right side and scores for six for Trinity here comes the extra point attempt Trojans up 14 trying to make it 15 here comes the snap and the kick is good our score with five minutes 38 seconds to go third quarter Trinity with Lee at their one foot line they are the ones that put the first points on the board to start the second half the DQ caramel mulatte resistance test begin <laughs> The irresistible new DQ Caramel Mulatte. Gooey caramel, rich coffee, and creamy DQ soft serve. DQ, something different. If you want big, Don's TV and Home Electronics is East Texas' largest dealer for big screens, big brands, big service, and great big deals. From big plasmas to HD-ready home theater projection systems to big home theater sound. And our sales and service associates are eager to help you with big smiles. Don's TV and Home Electronics. Now that's big. Hi, I'm Whitney at Mike Paul Auto Group, where if you give us a chance, we will save you money. There's still time to save with Employee Pricing Plus on new Jeeps. You pay what we pay and not a penny more. If a new Mazda is what you're looking for, save on Ultimate Zoom Zoom with the Mazda S plan exclusively here at Mike Pyle. Now is the best time ever to save on new Mazdas and Jeeps. Help us fight hunger in East Texas. Come take a test drive and we'll provide enough food for a hungry child for a week. Mike Powell going the extra mile against hunger. What an unbelievable switch in momentum, and Trinity now leading 29 to 14 with 5.38 to go third quarter. David, four plays, 85 yards, and 131 for the Trojans as Nance takes the final four yards to pay dirt. And they have had huge, long 67-yard run, 67-yard pass, 28-yard touchdown, and that time an amazing run by Dimitri Nance. Josh Bork at about the 5'10". Kickoff at the 20 and run down at about the 17 yard line and Lee down 15 but also struggling with field position here inside their 20 yard line is 93 that time made the tackle for Trinity. Demarcus Cummings taking out some of his frustrations because of that penalty that was against him on the uh, previous Robert E. Lee drive. Now you got to figure out here is how does Lee's offense with that impressive start to the second half, how do they make sure they realize there's a lot of time left and they're going to need a lot of time left to come back from 15 down against a great football team, but they can't let that turnover affect this drive or it would be even worse. Offset eye, fleet in motion. Preston Hill will take the drop back, rolls to the near side, pressured, now in trouble, and will step out of bounds at the 13-yard line. That's a sack, big 72, Alex Kautai, 6'1", 200, or 302-yard tackle, chasing down Preston Hill to the sideline on a loss of four. Well, he had an angle on Preston, and Preston, fortunately, 
could get around him and uh, had to just, he, he was wanting to throw the ball away, but he, you know, running to the left side, he couldn't throw across his body, and he alertly takes it out of bounds instead of making a mistake. Second down and 13, Lee at the 15-yard line. They'll mark it at the 14, the uh, stick say in the 15. 522 to go, clock stopped right there. Shotgun with two backs in front of him, Tucker and Williams. Preston, shotgun snap comes from Bailey. Runs the option to Williams at the 10, 15, and he will get maybe a yard. Matt Stewart, Michael Smith, excuse me, the 5'10", 146-pound cornerback, knocks Jason Williams down for a gain of a couple of yards, and that is it. That's not a bad play call, actually. You try to spread the field out, but unfortunately they ran to the near side or the short side of the field, and uh, this just made it just right for the Trinity defenders to bring down Williams. Well, okay, here's the, the bottom line right now with 5.16 to go third quarter. Trinity 29, Lee 14, and Lee faces third and 11 from their 16-yard line. And they don't want to turn the thing back over to Trinity's offense. Triple set receivers near side shotgun to Preston. Pressured, in trouble, fumbles. And the ball is on the ground and Trinity and Lee fight for it, but the Red Raiders have recovered at the 10-yard line. Fourth down, and they'll punt the ball from back near their goal line. And that looked like a jailbreak. Looked like they were trying to come this way, but I never had a chance to see the formation. Mal Leota, the 33, the 6-foot, 252 defensive end, makes that play. Well, what he makes, what happens is uh, he's not blocked at all, David. He comes back around from the near side, and Preston uh, tries to get away from him. He slaps the ball out of his hand, and fortunately, Lee falls on it this time. Here's a flag on the far side of the field, and I don't know, this might be a sideline warning against the Trinity Trojans, and that's all it is. The flag comes from the uh, linesman on the near side, as he throws a flag to kind of warn Trinity on the... Uh, Sideline encroachment of the officials, Steve Lineweaver and his coaching staff obviously not very happy with a lot of the calls that have gone against them in his opinion this uh, night. Trinity has been penalized eight times and a couple have been declined. Back to punt, Preston Hill, his last punt was a beauty of 43 yards. He's gonna need every bit of that here. Snap, kick, punts it, high end over end punt. Fair catch by Smith at the lead 47 yard line a 37 yard punt no return and the lead defense now comes out to face this tremendous offensive Gillis Trinity yeah and they're in lead territory already so uh, backs against the wall they what they need to do now is when they go to tackle is just try to strip the ball away and try to cause some turnovers in order for their offense to get back on the field. So the 47 yard line, Trinity up by 15. Euless Trinity, the Trojans, their white uniforms. The quarterback, Trevor Vitado, has been very impressive. But the Lee offense had a chance to get this thing tied or near a tie within two right before midway through the third quarter. But the turnover turns into seven points the other way for Trinity. Trojans with Ricard, Folahola. Mansell, Vitae, and Folau, the starting tackle to tackle. Roggins is the H-back. Vitito, quarterback, bootleg, and he got around. Jeremy Moore has a lot of room. 45, first down, close to it. The gain of nine yards. Nice tackle by Tim Heider. Heider fought off a block from the tight end downfield and made the stop. Ryan Jones was there. Gain of nine yards from Trevor Vitito, and he got around Jeremy Moore, who had a chance to make the tackle. That's at least the second time tonight that Vitito has uh, put a little shake and bake on Jeremy Moore and laid him in a heap and got by him again, and uh, he had him back in the backfield four or five yards deep, but just could not bring him down. Under four minutes to go in this game. Crowd on their feet in that drive that was the fourth down play, but not here. Full house backfield. Vitito. Runs a little fake to Handy, he gets outside and has a first down, and a little trickery down inside the lead 30, and a gain of 10 yards, make it 11. As they ran three running backs, Finito did the little uh, fumble ruski almost type formation, and Handy goes down inside the 30 to the 27, and a first down, a gain of 11. Well, he set up a yard or two closer to the line of scrim uh, scrimmage, a fullback, Mandy, that is, and the ball snapped directly to him, and they fool three or four red shirts and come to the near side with the, uh, with the two or three men in motion, but uh, four or five Red Raiders there to wrap him up after a big game. You can watch the replay of this game on Cox Communications on Monday and Wednesday of next week on Channel 18 or 62. Vitito to the fullback, Handy first down again, fumbles the football, and Lee picks it up. Jeremy Moore has it 
and a huge turnover to carry in Cuba, stripped the ball away from Handy, who had a first down inside the 20, and Jeremy Moore recovers. Hits the second fumble recovery for number seven this year. Well, that's just what we mentioned a few moments ago. Lee has to try to tackle the football. That's really their only way. They're going to slow down this offense as uh, they've had their way up against the line of scrimmage, and that time they do just that and get a big, big fumble on that play. So Lee will take the ball at their 21-yard line, and they had to stop something. They had to come up with some sort of stop to stay in this game. Now the offense trying to recover. Michael Fuller near side. Cruz Fry to the far side. Lone set back. Jason Williams double tight set. And Robert Lee jumped off sides. John Landis, the sophomore, moved a tad early. And this will cost the Red Raiders five yards back inside the 20. Sets up a different play call. Instead of first and 10, it's now first and 15. Mason checks out. Cruz Fry checks out. Jacob Amy and Jonathan Williams back in the game for Lee. It's the little things, David. That's the kind of thing that can really set a, a team back. It's only the third penalty against Lee tonight, and they've all been the same call. First down, Preston Hill. Play action. This time has a little bit of time now. Has to run again. He has a lot of room, too. 15-20, gets a block, Jackson. 25, runs a shoulder into the defensive back. Picks up most of uh, probably 12 or 13 yards out to the 29-yard line. 14-yard pickup by Preston. He tried to put a shoulder in the defensive back. That was Mike Smith on the stop. But a nice pickup and a nice job to make a decision and go. Yeah, he did it very, very quickly as the rush came from the outside from uh, Leo, from Mal Leota and also Henry Nutay from the backside that flushed out Preston. Nathan Tucker is the H-back. Fleet and Mason double tight set. Fleet actually on the bunch side, near side. This is Tucker on the wing back counter. First down outside the 30. Stops the clock, they'll move the change, and Henry Nute, who's a big-time Division I player, had seven sacks a year ago. Nathan gets five. Nute with the stop, and Lee gets a first down. Yeah, and he's a definite hoss of the front line, David. He made many big plays for the Trojan defense last year, and uh, he obviously is one of their leaders on their defense, stout defense this season. Nathan Tucker, three carries for 19 yards. Jason Williams has 16 for 70. Cruz Fry, far side, offset eye for Robert E. Lee. Tucker and Williams, here comes play action, bootleg, Preston Hill wants to run, 35, gets a block and kind of weaves in and out of a bunch of offensive linemen and Cootie, John, <laughs> John Landis was looking for somebody to hit and he finally went over to the Lee coaching staff and Preston cuts it inside and picks up a first down and a gain of 13 yards. It's a nice run, it's pretty much by design. He wanted to throw it first, but he tucked the ball under, found uh, Bailey leading the way outside along with Kirk Patrick. And Landis, as you mentioned, looking for somebody, anybody <laughs> to block. And he wanted to come at Coach Owens, but uh, he didn't do that. I but. think you saw Gary Fleet knew he better hit somebody. First down, and Lee at their own 45. Down by 15 with under two minutes to go third quarter. Preston takes the snap, sets up, wants to go over the middle. He's got Williams, pass tipped in the air. That is a play that Jason Williams scored on in a game last year, a scene pattern when he comes out of the backfield with a minute 39 to go, though there was a lot of traffic and that thing could have been picked off. 29-14 Lee, he caught a touchdown here at Rose Stadium on that same play as well against John Tyler and then caught a long one against Lufkin down at Abe Martin Stadium. Unfortunately, fortunately for Lee, David, it wasn't intercepted. Nice defensive play back in the secondary too for the Trinity Trojans. Lee with two receivers to the far side, Amy and Williams. Preston Hill, spread, stretch to Jason, first down midfield, inside the 45, and he shoved him for a couple of more yards. And that time, Jason Williams with a lead block and a nice pin job by Tyler Fleet, picks up 12, and really very nice job by Jason to get and let things happen and then find a way, and he got knocked down in the game 11. He was allowing his line to get in front of him and make some nice cutback blocks and Mario Trimble is there to do just that, along with Landis from the right side for Robert E. Lee. At the 43 and a half yard line, Robert E. Lee with a minute 21 to go, third quarter. Lone setback, Jason Williams with 81 yards tonight. Here's Jason again on the counter tray, and that time he just put his head down in a big old scrum, led by Saya Moiakioli, the senior linebacker, who's the big time player inside. Alex Kautai, Poli, Fine Feo, Iaki also is in on the play, along with Henry Nutai and Maliota. 
Well, they were a heck of a team last year. Great game at Pennington Field, 42-39 Trinity. It was a game when Lee was down 42-32, and then Tony Bush, remember, had a 97-yard kickoff return, but Lee could not stop Trinity on the next possession. They ran the clock out. Second and 10 Lee, 35 seconds to go third quarter. Fleet is in motion, and here comes movement. And I think Lee may have jumped again on the right-hand side of the offensive line. And it's going to cost Lee five yards. That's four penalties now, Lee, and all have been of the same variety, false starts, and uh, something that they'll have to work on the line, Coach Fleet and Coach Owens and company. They had the one late hit on the quarterback oh, that helped get a first down for Trinity as well in that last drive in which they scored. So Lee now first and 15 at the 49-yard line. Remember, in the game against Coleraine, it was a procedure call when they had the ball at the 14-yard line that kick start, that, that hurt that hurt that drive. Under 30 seconds to go, third quarter. Lee down 15, Preston Hill will go play action. Here comes the blitz, he's got a man fleet, caught 40, 35, first down, skips over a, a defensive back inside the 30. Clock continues to, to run down to nine seconds. Matt Stewart on the stop, but a nice play and a good job, kind of a, a little delay call to the tight end tighter. Fleet for a gain of 20 yards, and that should end the third quarter once they set the sticks. Well, it was a well-designed play as the flood came to the near side, and uh, Preston uh, picked up some nice blocks. Uh, the blitz happened, and uh, that was receiving the right flat for a big game. Tyler Fleet, who had the dropsies last week with a nice job there and a nice catch and run at the end of three. Euless Trinity 29, Robert E. Lee 14. We're back in one minute on News Talk 600 KTBB. In the game of life, there are no timeouts, only time wasted. The path you choose now determines your future. But where can you go to find a sense of purpose? There is a place where team spirit steps off the field and into the classroom, where no victory goes unnoticed, and there's no such thing as wasted time. That place is Tyler Junior College, living life in color, never black and white. Come to Tyler Junior College. We're changing the game. We're changing lives. When you join ETMC EMS, you get peace of mind. Because an annual membership fee as low as $48 covers you and all qualified members of your household for emergency and medically necessary non-emergency transports, which would cost an average of $600 each. And you get the added peace of mind of knowing that the region's most advanced EMS system will answer your call for help. Membership deadline is September 30th, so don't delay. Call or visit the website and join ETMC EMS today. Card shopping can be stressful. With all the clutter out there, it's hard to tell what to buy. But at Jim Lozier's Fire Station Auto Center, we believe that the simplest way is the best way. So we offer a large selection of quality pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs priced to sell with no hassles. Each vehicle has been through a 20-point inspection for quality assurance. You can shop in comfort under the awnings and check out our newly expanded lot with more inventory than ever before. Jim Lozier's Fire Station Auto Center on the corner of Glenwood and Vine and Tyler. Start the fourth quarter. Robert E. Lee down by 15. First down at the Trinity 28-yard line. Up the middle, Jason Williams. Not much room at all. Nute at the bottom of the pile, but you got to give the boys inside. Kautai and Fine along with Moyakiola for stopping that thing. And this time, Jason could not bounce off and make anything out of it. Second down, Lee at the 27-yard line, and now the Red Raiders trying to avoid back-to-back -back losses. They had that last year, remember? They were 3-3 three and three at one time and still won it all. Well, Lee's offensive line is having the same battle their defensive front is having as they're pretty much outsized by poundage up front for Trinity tonight. So second down and nine. Amy and Williams, that's Jackson, excuse me, in the slot. Preston back to throw, sets up the screen. Fleet gets a block, Bailey, 25-20. Close to a first down inside the 20. Nice job by Andrew Bailey down inside. He's got tied up with big number 93, Demarcus Cummings. Also, Mario Trimble was down there, and he's just shy of a first down. And Lee picks up eight yards. It's third down and a yard at the Trinity 19-yard line. A credit Trinity's linebacker. Moyakiola, he just does a great job of fighting off the block of a half-injured Andrew Baylor, who's Baylor, who's fighting gallantly tonight uh, to make the tackle that time on Fleet. 10 of 12 for Preston Hill for 120 yards, 130 yards tonight, but they need more. Preston Hill, handoff inside, and there's another fumble, but Lee recovers at the 16, make it the 11. That was to Nathan Tucker on that little trap play, and he picked up five yards, 
but then the ball popped loose and Nathan was in full stride. He picked it up and landed on at the 11 yard line at a gain of nine yards and a first down. He gets the credit for that too. He's, uh, he's very alert. He's able to stay with his run. Nice block inside for Trimble and Bailey for Robert E. Lee. Well, Lee was down here to start that second half and now they're at the 11 yard line with the clock at 11 minutes. Here comes a flag and I think an illegal substitution is Official on the near side, that is Kyle Rutherford from the Tyler chapter. We'll see what the flag might be, maybe an illegal substitution for Lee. It's a sideline warning, so both coaching staffs have uh, had their ear full. Now, what's so strange about that call is that the ball is at the 11-yard line. It was almost where Trinity had their sideline warning, where it was so far away from the play. First down, Lee at the 11. Preston Hill to Jason. Stretch play right tackle at about the 10, close to the 8. Nice job coming up is number 20, Tory Pinkerton. John Landis with the lead block, but uh-oh. Ja, uh-oh. Jason Williams is coming up with an ankle injury or something, and he is down on the sideline. Favoring his left ankle, and Jason Williams is ripping off his helmet. He is very upset. He's a tough guy. They need him. And here comes Marquis Seaton, who will come in. He's had one carry this year. And wouldn't you know it, right down near the goal line, you lose the franchise back, and they'll try to see if he can walk it off. May have gotten it twisted a little bit. Play clock now. Lee's got to be careful here. Down to 10. They do a lot of shifting, a lot of movement. At the 8. 10 minutes to go. Play clock is at 5. It's at 2. Preston Hill play action. Tyler Fleet is open. Can he get it to him? He can't get it to him. He was open. He had beaten the linebacker, Joe Licchio, but Preston didn't get enough air underneath of it. And it's now third down and eight at the nine-yard line. It's a great bit of protection up front for the Lee offensive line as they held, held the defenders at bay on that play and looking to the far side of the field. What all, all Fleet did is run a crossing pattern and uh, Preston led him just a little too far, overthrowing him by a couple of yards. Well, that was the same play in which Josh Hill hit him for a two-point conversion, almost an identical situation against Spring Westfield down in San Antonio. Third and eight, Lee. Inside the 10, Preston Hill play action again. Rolls to the near side. Now he's in trouble and falls down at the 15-yard line. And they're going to have to go for it. Henry Nute was there. Boy, this is a, a second half from the Lee offense has moved the ball very well, except the one drive they had that bad drive. But they, they, they moved the ball down to the foot yard line, the turnover. They get it down inside the 10 here. Jason Williams goes out. And now they're sacked. And uh, you wonder if there's a little cobweb from that pole rain drive to start the third quarter. You start to have, you got to get the ball. When you're in the red zone, you, you have to be able to score points. And they got to go for a touchdown here. Seaton is the deep back. They need the one. Preston Hill, play action, bootleg on the far side. Does get around the defensive end. Now throws in the end. Oh, it's in the dirt. It's in the field turf. He had Jonathan Williams about five yards deep in the end zone, but he just couldn't get enough on it. And Lee turns it over, and the second drive in the red zone comes up with no points with 8.57 to go in this game. You're not going to have many more opportunities. No, David, you're not. And, uh, that's unfortunate because they had a long 12-play drive that time. That's 21 plays in those two drives that you had mentioned, and uh, it's just come up off or not with a turnover, and now the uh, turnover on downs. Lee. Now the lead defense has to try to suck it up. They have, they've been in position. They forced the turnover on the Jeremy Moore fumble recovery that to carry in Cuba, the safety, the junior, was able to strip it out of the hands of the Lederick Handy. And Lee's defense has just got to get the team the ball back again. And Trinity's going to try to, of course, work on that clock. Here's a deep pitch back to Nance. Stiff arms out of bounds at about the 15. Boy, Michael Wall had a crackback block where he just got bulldozed and then a stiff arm and Dimitri Nance out to the 20-yard line for a gain of four. He's closing in 19 carries unofficially for Dimitri Nance for 199 yards. He loves playing against Robert E. Lee. Yeah, he does. That big game last year at this time uh, in the heat at uh, at uh, Pennington Field over there. He's just done an outstanding job. He's a great back. So here's second down and six. 
Tight set. Vitito. Nance spins away. Now they try to push him with that huge offensive line. He got about four more. Trinity here, all they want to do here, Randy, is milk that clock, which is at 840, and a 15-point lead out to the 23. He got four more. Yeah, they're more than happy with this. Just something we won't pass along. Lee has run 28 offensive plays in the half, and that's the ninth offensive play in the entire second half for Trinity. As Lee's controlled in between the uh, 20s, they've just been able, unable to score. 7-6 Kilgore continues to lead John Tyner at sold out Ari St. John Stadium. And John Tyner has apparently missed a couple of field goals in that game. Here it's Trinity 29 and lead 14 with eight minutes left in the fourth quarter at Trinity Mother Francis Rowe Stadium. Third down, deep pitch back to Dimitri Nance, turns the corner, first down 30, 35, 40, sideline, gone. Dimitri Nance. 77 yards. Touchdown, Eulis Trinity. He is near 300 yards tonight. And Dimitri Nance turned the corner and kicked it into overdrive and down the sideline. Touchdown, 77 yards. And this game is 35-14 Trojans. He had a great block on the outside from Jordan Scroggins is tied in, along with Monaki Baitai, the right guard, with a nice seal block. And he just gets right around the end, as you mentioned, and he's off to the races for six. Yeah, once he turned the corner, it was one opportunity to kind of try to force him out of bounds, but he's so low to the ground. 5'10", 195, senior was able to, there comes a flag at the end of the play. I think they're trying to see if Lee may have had too many players in the field. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I'm not sure if they did or not. Yep, illegal, too many men on the field against Lee. And no matter what happens in this game, it's 35, 36 to 14 now. Robert E. Lee has had some problems with personnel on the kicking game. They've had to shuffle guys in at the uh, last second on some extra point attempts, both in coverage and in kicking. 7.50 to go. Trinity 36, Robert E. Lee 14, back in one minute. The DQ Caramel Latte Resistance Test. Begin. <laughs> The irresistible new DQ Caramel Moulatte. Gooey caramel, rich coffee, and creamy DQ soft serve. DQ, something different. <laughs> if you want big, Don's TV and Home Electronics is East Texas' largest dealer for big screens, big brands, big service, and great big deals. From big plasmas to HD-ready home theater projection systems to big home theater sound. And our sales and service associates are eager to help you with big smiles. Don's TV and Home Electronics. Now that's big. Mike Powell introduces a new kind of food drive to East Texas. One in four East Texas children are growing up without enough food to eat. Even minor malnutrition can impair physical growth and diminish learning ability. This is your chance to join us in the fight against hunger. Come into Mike Pile, take a test drive, and we'll provide enough food to feed a hungry child for an entire week. Mike Pile, going the extra mile in the fight against hunger. 7.50 to go in the uh, fourth quarter as Euless Trinity has brought that high octane offense into Rose Stadium. 36 to 14 Trojans. Well, scoring summary for Trinity, David. Three plays and 80 yards and 109. And Dimitri Nance is just adding to his uh, incredible totals on the evening with a 77 yard touchdown run. Here comes another little pooch kick that uh, Lee will field at the 23. It's on the ground and it's loose. And it's still down and Trinity, I think, has recovered. They have at the 28 yard line. They just kept on kicking it over there and eventually that's the second or third time, unfortunately, that Lee was not able to come up with the football, and that time it's recovered by Trinity at the lead 28-yard line, and the landslide now continues. Yeah, it appears that way, David, just uh, not able to fall the ball, and it, it's a muffed uh, attempt for Robert E. Lee on the uh, special teams play, and now Trinity with a golden opportunity to cross the 40-point threshold. Uh, upcoming on this drive. Well, there have been way too many turnovers here. You, you got a, the, the fumble to start the second half. The, basically, the four downs down here a minute ago, of course, also 
basically is almost like having the turnover. And now the fumble recovery here. Play action, Vitito going for the kill, going to the sideline. King caught and dropped. Coverage down there by Tim Heider, looking for Marcus King, and the pass incomplete inside the 10. Heider was there to create a little bit of problems and friction, and it's second down and 10. And Vitito threw an absolute rope that his receiver couldn't handle anyway, as it was slightly behind him as he turned. Had he turned back to the inside, he would have caught it probably at six, but nice bit of coverage for Heider as he's right on his backside to defend. First pass of the second half by Trevor Vitito. They really haven't had to throw the ball much because they had the monster run by Nance to set up the last touchdown and then the long touchdown a minute ago. Vitito, draw play to Nance up the middle. He's over 200 yards, closing in on 300 yards. Down to the 19-yard line, a gain of eight yards with 7.30 to go. And unofficially now, I have Dimitri Nance for 22 carries, 288 yards rushing. With 7.18 to go in the fourth quarter. And he has three touchdowns to add on to that. <laughs> impressive evening for Mr. Nance. And maybe no touchdown more impressive then the five-yard run where he bounced off several players and went Mike Rozier against UCLA back in 1983. Oh, yeah. Third and two, Vitito back to Nance in the sweep. First down at the 20, dragged down from behind. But he has a first down at the 15-yard line. And Dimitri Nance closing in on 300 yards. I don't know, and I've been doing them, what, league football since 1991. I don't remember a running back getting 300. I know that Lake Highlands on a couple of occasions had a couple of kids getting the 250 range. I know Vondrell McGee's had a big game. Fred Talley had a big game. This kid had a big game last And he year. had a 230-yard game, yep. I believe. It I think it was two-something. Two, two something. It was a bunch. <laughs> He's really having a, a great uh, in regular season against Robert E. Lee. Lee bounces around. Nance again with that carry. Here's Nance up the middle, bounces outside at the 10, makes a man miss and drag down from behind. Nice play from behind by a Lee defensive back. Coming from the back side to make that play was Drew White, but he got six more. Nance, where did he get on the play before that? Because we're getting close to some numbers here. Did he get? It was a five-yard run on his last run that gave him the first down. 299 yards on 24 carries for senior Dimitri Nance. And in his career, he has over 650 yards rushing in three games with six minutes to go in the third game against Robert E. Lee, a very proud football program. And this guy's got the, he's got the, their respect. Here's a bootleg by Vitito, and he can't get around the corner. Now throws it, and the pass is incomplete. Nice job by Lee on 21, that is Michael Hunter, who forces Vitito on the bootleg pass to throw the ball incomplete on second down. Third and four now with six minutes to go. Our score, Ulysses Trinity 36, Robert Lee 14. Lee is off next week, and they'll need to regroup to get ready for the District 12-5A opener for them against the Rockwall Yellow Jackets on the road. Uh, that'll be a good chance, uh, hopefully, for Lee to get back on the winning uh, side of things. Uh, the same scenario happened last year. Of course, it was an injury bug yep. this year. But they had, they had a lot of weapons uh, that they knew they still had in the holster. They just couldn't use some of them. Here comes the handoff to Nance. Over 300 and over the goal line. Touchdown, Dimitri Nance. That was easy. Boy, he is a tremendous running back, and he's got that monstrous line. And Trinity has put up a 40-plus spot on the lead defense, a nine-yard touchdown, which also puts Dimitri Nance over 300 yards, four touchdowns in this game, and he now has for the year 657 yards and has scored 10 touchdowns in three games. Extra point good, our score, 5.54 to go in the game. Trinity 42, Robert the 14, we're back in 60 seconds. Hi, I'm Whitney at Mike Powell Auto Group, where if you give us a chance, we will save you money. There's still time to save with Employee Pricing Plus on new Jeeps. You pay what we pay and not a penny more. If a new Mazda is what you're looking for, save on Ultimate Zoom Zoom with the Mazda S plan exclusively here at Mike Powell. Now is the best time ever to save on new Mazdas and Jeeps. Help us fight hunger in East Texas. Come take a test drive and we'll provide enough food for a hungry child for a week. Mike Powell, going the extra mile against hunger.
If you want big, Don's TV and Home Electronics is East Texas' largest dealer for big screens, big brands, big service, and great big deals. From big plasmas to HD-ready home theater projection systems to big home theater sound. And our sales and service associates are eager to help you with big smiles. Don's TV and Home Electronics. Now that's big. The DQ Caramel Mulatte Resistance Test. Begin. Irresistible new DQ Caramel Mulatte. Gooey caramel, rich coffee, and creamy DQ soft serve. DQ, something different. Robert E. Lee, 43-14, trailing Euless Trinity with 5 minutes and 54 seconds remaining in this game. They've been scoring summary for Trinity. They went 73 yards in six plays and took a buck, 52 off the clock, and Nance with a fantastic game, goes over for nine yards out. Lee this time at the 15, out to the 20, breaks the tackle 25. There's a flag down as well. Not sure, maybe a tug of the face mask or a clip in that particular area from the linesman. Return by Jamal Mitchell. Now Mike Owens and company. This is back-to-back -back losses, 27-12 and 43-14 with still almost half the fourth quarter to go in this one. It's been a while. Last year, Trinity scored 42 against Lee. And of course, that was the, the high mark of anybody last year. And this does apparently a penalty against Robert E. Lee on the kickoff return. And um, uh, ambulance has been brought into Rose Stadium. We saw this last week with a fan on the far side. And Another one has come into Rose Stadium. It's over near the uh, visitors' locker room, and I've got some name. I got a name, but I want to make sure we confirm that first. Marcus Jackson's first ever snap at quarterback at the varsity level at the Lee 13-yard line. Double tight set, hands it off. Nothing there. They lost a couple of yards. And what Mike Owen said, remember earlier in the week, is that. Trinity is not only on a mission, but they're playing possessed, and they have done that tonight. They saw Moe Akioli as Mike has gone to numerous backups here on that last drive defensively, and also some backups here offensively. They lost a couple of yards at second down. Well, you can tell Trinity's defense is really uh, kind of yucking it up out there. They're having a good time, and uh, you know, for a very good reason, they're dominating the line of scrimmage, and that's been the big difference. Well, they got a little. Uh, Payback that uh, again, Steve Weinweaver did not want to say that earlier. Looks like an offsides call against the Trinity. That's one thing the Trinity has done is the defensive tackles have jumped into the neutral zone a couple of times very quick. Are they going to mark this against Lee? And that's why they jump into the neutral zone and it goes back to the seven yard line with six now under five minutes when they start the clock with 5.06 to go in this game. Remember now. Lee has next week off, and they're going to need it to regroup. And they played this schedule so that they would play as well as they could against or, or, or play as, as good a competition as possible. And that has been the case without question this year to get them ready for what is going to be a tougher 12-5A this year than last. Here's Marquis Seaton out to the 10 for a gain of about three, with now under three, now five minutes to go in the game. Jamie? David, you talked about the backups being in on both offense and defense. One of the guys obviously not out there on the offensive side is running back Jason Williams. He did sprain his ankle. He sprained it actually two series ago, limped out a couple times, but then heard it on that last drive. But Jason, uh, talking to uh, the trainer here, told me he thought he would be okay just to sprain, but obviously he's not going to go back in there. But the timing of that, Jamie, I mean, thank God Jason's okay. The timing of it, they're down inside the 10. Yeah, and, they, and they lose their ultimate weapon. Couldn't have come at a worse yeah. time. Yeah, well, a lot of things tonight that's been the case. Back to throw Marcus Jackson. Nice play action pass. Sets up and goes deep. He's got Fuller overshoots him. But look at the gun of Marcus Jackson. And Jackson has pulled up, limping a little bit in the end zone. Oh, my goodness. Man, he's got a great yeah, arm. Marcus, Marcus Jackson limping yards. back to the sideline here. I see that. He's 
pulled up probably with a uh, cramp, it appears. But he did heave that thing. Yeah, 55 yards in the air. First time we saw him was during the spring game, and he was very impressive. He's a wide receiver. Caught a pass earlier. Four-yard catch in the game, and here comes fourth down, and Lee will punt. Preston Hill back in the game in his end zone. Chase Carlton with the snap. No pressure. Preston, he has really punted well. Look at this one. A monster Man. shot that hits at about the 45 and will be down at the 50. Beautiful 40-yard punt, no return. And Preston Hill on a couple of occasions who punts left-footed has sent off a couple of cannons with 3.51 to go in this game. And Trinity now 43 to 14, and they have sent their message. They are everything that Mike Owen said they would be, but Lee did have that crack to start the third quarter. They had the crack. Yeah, they had the great opportunity, and uh, just one big miscue, and then a second miscue occurred, and uh, they shot themselves in the foot, and uh, it's come back to cost them this ballgame. So at midfield, Trinity with a 29-point lead. Here comes the backup quarterback, and they get four or five yards up the middle. In the game now for Vitito is Ryan Taggart. Taggart hands off to the deep back. Chris Beard picks up six yards. Actually picked up four down to the lead, 46, with under four minutes to go in this game. Well, they have full sale substitutions in the game, David, so everybody's getting a chance it, it, to play we, tonight, too. It, we're talking about Brenda? Okay. 3.17 to go. We've been told that, and hopefully everything's going to be okay, that one of the league coaches' wives has been the one where they've called for the ambulance, and we do wish her well. Second down and six. Here's the Trey and Lee's defense. The young players, lots of backups in the game, and they are playing hard. Jess Roberts was there for Robert E. Lee along with Jansen Rule. Or is that 38? Chase Allen was there. And a loss of a yard with under three minutes. The score now irrelevant because Trinity's going to go to 3-0. and I'll tell you what, they need to shoot up the charts in the class 5A top 10. Oh, yeah. Obviously, this could kick Lee out of the top 10 because of the one-sided score, but they are tested again, and they have a lot of work to do before Rockwell. They know that, they knew that, and they've got two weeks to fix it. But it's hard to imagine them playing somebody that's just, or better, here comes a play outside. Tim Hyder with a nice tackle. I like the way he comes up and forces the run, a gain of only a yard. It's going to be hard to imagine, Randy, that they're going to play in more of a hostile environment than they did at Columbus against Coleraine. And it's going to be hard to imagine to play a team as good or better, not maybe as good, Longview's good, JT's improved, Mesquite's, but to be better than what they're playing yeah, here yeah. tonight. This team, they're playing uh, out, of the, uh, out of the Metroplex. Uh, I, without a doubt, they're the best team other than South Lake Carroll, probably in that era, area of the state. But uh, they're very formidable, very large and very fast, and uh, they make things happen very quickly. And uh, yeah, I look for them to go a long way and probably the Division One playoffs. And Steve on. Linewaver uh, brought in a bunch of backups on that drive with Taggart, the quarterback, and Trinity will come in with a punt team, and Jonathan Williams back to field to punt with Marcus Jackson now, working on his ankle. And our thoughts and prayers are with uh, one of the league coaches' wives who has been taken over to the uh, ambulance. And another kicking situation where Lee did not have enough players on the field. And I, I don't bring in Roderick Brown, but Trinity was called for a, was that a delay of game? A five yard delay of game, I think it was. Another penalty against Trinity. They actually were ready to punt, but they stopped them from punting and then they got a delay. Here's the punt off the side of the foot, down inside the lead 30, back out to the 33, 34 yard line and stopped right there with a minute nine. Now it'll be out of injury. Who's got a quarterback here? Marcus Jackson has come out onto the field with a minute nine to go in this game. Now, here are some other scores. Longview led Shreveport Evangel 31 to 14 at halftime. That remains the same. And at Ari St. John Stadium in Kilgore, Kilgore leads John Tyler 14 to 6 with three minutes to go in that game. And Justin Brinker's trying to update me on that as we go. Marcus Jackson with Marquis Seaton, the lone setback with double tight set. 34, Seaton right tackle. Nice little run out to the 41, two yard line, gain of six. And I like the way Marquis Seaton sticks it up in there if they ever need him to 
get some quality carries, and he got seven yards. And a nice block up front, too, for uh, Robert E. Lee, number 72. John Landis with a nice seal block to open the door for Seaton on that running play. Lee was two and two at this time last year, lost to Lufkin and Trinity. He'll be two and two at the end of nine district this year. Marcus Jackson to Josh Burke turns the corner. Look at the speed, 45 midfield and knocked out of bounds at midfield. Coming up to make the stop was Prince Candy. But Josh Burke turned the corner and picked up 11 yards. Yeah, he did a nice run and he just uh, cuts outside and shows his nice wheels. And uh, he went out to the open and it, Nice lick for Trinity Trojans in the secondary. 26 seconds, and that could be this coming play, the last play of this game. Lee football doesn't lose many games at home. Here's the handoff. Burke outside and runs right into the defensive end. He's tossed down for a loss of four. Yori Yanga makes the stop, and that is going to do it as Burke loses four yards, and Trinity not happy about losing in the semifinals a year ago. They do come into Trinity Mother Francis Rose Stadium and get some revenge. It's not a semifinal victory, but it's a victory against the team that ended their season a year ago. Trinity won the first matchup a year ago. They win the first matchup here. We're not sure whether or not there will be a second matchup. We'll have to wait and see. Our final score, Trinity 43, Robert E. 14. That's the final score from here at Trinity Mother Francis Rose Stadium in Tyler. We'll try to get a word, and here's Jamie Lent. All right, Coach Owens, you uh, coming into this non-district schedule, you knew, it, you knew it was going to be tough. You played a very good team in Columbus last weekend. You get another one here tonight. Uh, talk about those two matchups and how you feel it's going to prepare your team for the district season. Well, I think we had an opportunity to get in the game anyway if we don't turn it over a couple times and, and mess around during in the red zone. So, I mean, I think our kids played about as hard as they can play. Uh, we made too many mistakes against a great football team to expect to win. You talk about the troubles in the red zone, the first fumble uh, specifically. Do you feel like it's a different game if you guys are able to punch it in there? Sure. I mean, you know, we're down about just a little bit then, you know. So, uh, uh, yeah, it'd be a different game, I think. You know, of course, I don't know that we'd ever – really could stop them. You know, number five is just a great running back, and they're so big in there that it's hard on us. It really is. On the positive side, it seemed uh, at times tonight your passing game started to get things going, uh, spe specifically with Preston going to Jacob Amy. Do you see them as a combo that's going to come up big for you this year? Well, I think we're going to spread it around just like we always do, but we've got, you know, I think we've got a chance to have a pretty good football team if we're just quit making so many mistakes, and, and we can't, like I say, you play somebody like you as Trinity, you can't make a mistake. You make one, you pay for it. Uh, and we paid for it several times. You guys get the bye next week. Does, you get the bye next week. Does it come at a good time? Yeah, yeah. It gives us, a, you know, we'll take Monday off, and then we'll work out Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday after school, try to get, you know, everything ironed out to get ready for district. You know, I think that we've played some great football teams, especially the last two have been tremendous. And uh, it can't do anything but help us. It really can't. Appreciate your time, Coach. Thanks. When you join ETMC EMS, you get peace of mind. Because an annual membership fee as low as $48 covers you and all qualified members of your household for emergency and medically necessary non-emergency transports, which would cost an average of $600 each. And you get the added peace of mind of knowing that the region's most advanced EMS system will answer your call for help. Membership deadline is September 30th, so don't delay. Call or visit the website and join ETMC EMS today. In the game of life, there are no timeouts, only time wasted. The path you choose now determines your future. But where can you go to find a sense of purpose? There is a place where team spirit steps off the field and into the classroom, where no victory goes unnoticed, and there's no such thing as wasted time. That place is Tyler Junior College, living life in color, never black and white. Come to Tyler Junior College. We're changing the game. We're changing lives. 
Car shopping can be stressful. With all the clutter out there, it's hard to tell what to buy. But at Jim Lozier's Fire Station Auto Center, we believe that the simplest way is the best way. So we offer a large selection of quality pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs, priced to sell with no hassles. Each vehicle has been through a 20-point inspection for quality assurance. You can shop in comfort under the awnings and check out our newly expanded lot with more inventory than ever before. Jim Lozier's Fire Station Auto Center on the corner of Glenwood and Vine and Tyler. Thanks for watching High School Football. Presented by TISD and Cox Communications of Tyler. Brought to you by Dairy Queen. Also brought to you by these sponsors. The DQ Caramel Malate Resistance Test. Begin. Irresistible new DQ Caramel Moulatte. Gooey caramel, rich coffee, and creamy DQ soft serve. DQ, something different. <laughs> if you want big, Don's TV and Home Electronics is East Texas' largest dealer for big screens, big brands, big service, and great big deals. From big plasmas to HD-ready home theater projection systems to big home theater sound. And our sales and service associates are eager to help you with big smiles. Don's TV and Home Electronics. Now that's big.